is on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put them in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her on TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. This is Talk Today with Jeremy Kyle and Nicola Thorpe. There you are. Good morning. It's 6 o'clock. It's Tuesday the 12th of March. You're with Talk Today on TV, radio, online and on your smart speaker. Our top stories for you this morning. Body blow. You try saying this. 30p Lee becomes three-party Lee as he defects to reform. The big question this morning. Can the Prime Minister survive losing yet another MP? Well, back to Boris. Come on! The former leader <laughs> is set to hit the campaign trail in a desperate attempt to win back Red Bull voters. And a royal apology, the Princess of Wales says she's sorry for editing her Mother's Day photograph, but fails to silence speculation online, led by our super sleuth, Nicola Thorpe. <laughs> <laughs> and wetter from the west, heavy rain spreading eastwards across the UK today. Are we going to see anything drier this week? I have the details for you in the forecast a little later. Cheers, Naz. Now it's time for the headlines with Emily. Thank you, Nicola. Good morning. Reports this morning suggest that the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, could call a snap general election if 10 Conservative MPs defect to Reform UK. It comes after Lee Anderson yes. said he's been given the chance to speak out for millions of people up and down the country after defecting from the Conservative Party amid an Islamophobia row. The MP says he should be able to speak his mind, and those living in his constituency agree. Well, he got kicked out of Tory party, basically. And it was saying what we all think. It's going ridiculous. I didn't know it was today, but I like Lee Anderson. I think it's a good move for us, hopefully, anyway. Because he tells the truth, his working class background, it's just, he comes out with it. He's not frightened of what he's saying. Prince William has pressed ahead with his public duties despite the controversial photo editing row that surrounds his wife. The Prince of Wales attended an event bringing together Earthshot, Earthshot Prize winners last night after Kate was forced to apologise for any confusion over a family photograph that was issued by Kensington Palace, which she later admitted editing. A major Tory donor has apologised to Labour's Diane Abbott for allegedly saying she should be shot and made him want to hate all black women. Frank Hester, the chief executive of the Phoenix Partnership, which donated £10 million to the Tories last year, said his comments had nothing to do with her gender nor her colour of skin. The government is today warning that the UK risks blackouts unless it builds new gas-fired power stations. In a speech later on, the Energy Security Secretary, Claire Cattino, will say that the new stations will replace existing plants that are soon to retire. Well, critics say it could threaten the UK's legal obligations to cut carbon emissions to net zero by 2050. And we're being warned to expect bananas to become more expensive due to climate change. A meeting is being held in Rome later to discuss the challenges facing the fruit, as top experts suggest rising temperatures pose an enormous threat to supplies across the world. Those are the headlines. I'll have another update in an hour. Just the first thing. Thank you, Emily. By the way, say good morning to uh, Poirot here. <laughs> who spent most of yesterday and this morning with a magnifying glass trying to work out that Photoshop. Let's talk bananas. Let's Forget, talk bananas. leave her alone. Let's talk bananas. Mm -hmm. Right, there's, a, there's apparently no bananas in the world and it's going to be super expensive. And where do you think... But bananas don't come from Rome. Why are they having a meeting in Rome? <laughs> I'm not quite sure I don't sure understand if it was Bridgetown Barbados, but why is it in Rome? I think it's probably where there were some kind of climate talks taking place. But how, how are you, Poirot? Do you even know how much a banana costs? Here we go, Jeremy Cowell, man of the people, how much is a banana? Depends what you buy organic ones or whatever. <laughs> I usually you don't, buy... I you usually don't know buy, organic. I d I, 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 five oh, no. would be about £2.25. Mm, OK. I'll give you that. It, yeah? depends, it depends where you shop. 
Well, I shop in that place where you could buy a speedboat in the middle aisle. <laughs> yes, precisely. Aldi. I don't at all, I'm lying. <laughs> anyway, uh, good morning and welcome to Talk Today, our vain attempt at the television show. We want you to be involved today. Do you want to throw this out, Super Sleuth? Sure. Uh, we're asking you all morning, should Kensington Palace publish the unedited photo of the Princess of Wales Can and I the talk kids? to you about this? I think they should. And I'm well, with Piers him. Morgan's gone nuts about this. Piers and I will rarely disagree. He'd be the first to say that. However, I'm You'd completely... rarely disagree. You'd rarely so, agree. Oh, there we go. Good stuff. What a great start to the Why do you we would think, rarely agree. Why can't... All right, let me let me take the opposite view, just out of interest. Front of the sun, lay off Kate. The, what, you're all I'm for I'm not having right. a go at Kate. No, no, hear me out. She's ill, she's done something, she says... She came out yesterday, yep. said, I photoshopped. She's probably sat, sat in Kensington Palace, not feeling great, done that, and everybody thinks this is the chance to pile I into I have her. the utmost sympathy for her. She's been very, very... Poorly, from what we've been told. We don't told. know, though, do we? Well, no, she's was she? poorly enough to be in, in hospital for two weeks, which is mm. what we've been told. Mm. And that, for me, means, you've, you know, you've been ill. Um, and there's undue and unfair speculation about what has happened with her. Led by you, lots of other Not people like you. Not led yes. by me. But this photo, the release of this photo, just made things ten times worse. And I think that the only thing that they could possibly do in order to stop the speculation, because it will continue... Is released the On the front photograph. of the star this morning, Donald Trump seems to be in the picture. How did he get there? I think hey. that definitely is a Photoshop there, Jeremy. Anyway, to our top story this morning, the PM, yes, him, is under renewed pressure after Lee Anderson uh, defected to reform yesterday. Well, the Ashfield MP, who has been suspended for Islamophobic remarks from the Tory party, became reform's first sitting MP. It is his third party in six years. He was suspended as a Labour councillor in 2018. Speaking yesterday, he explained his decision. Like millions of people in this country, I feel that we are slowly giving our country away. We are allowing people into our country that will never integrate and adopt our British values. Parliament doesn't seem to understand what many British people want. It is no secret that I've been talking to my friends in reform for a while. And Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. And like millions of people up and down the country, all I want is my country back. Well, we're joined now by Talk TV's chief political nerd, sorry, commentator and political nerd, sorry, commentator, Matthew Stadlin. Gentlemen, good morning. In the blue tie, Matty, this morning. Not just any blue tie, a, a real Tory royal blue tie. Just right. to confuse you. Yes. <laughs> uh, Pete, let's start with you. Um, uh, uh, Lee Anderson, you see three constituents there saying he speaks for us, he speaks for people, right? Suspended from the Tory party um, uh, for Islamophobic remarks. They found that unacceptable. He said it was free speech. Whatever your opinion on that, fine. There is, though, if you look at this, not dissing reform or sticking up for Sunak or criticising Starmer. Three parties in six years. Ideologically, you would expect to be criticised just a tad, wouldn't you? Yes, 30p Lee has become three-party Lee. We wrote that. Uh, Why are you nicking our line, he man? Said, I actually wrote it yesterday and they stole it from me. So, anyway, um, there's... Uh, Is that true? <laughs> yeah. So, there's... Actually, <laughs> actually no, there's a producer called Harry who wrote it. Anyway, and I stole it from him. His fee will be 0p. Anyway, um, the point is that Lee Anderson has moved from the Conservatives to reform. He was previously in Labour. In fact, he <coughs> campaigned for Michael Foote in 1983. So My he's been God. on quite a political journey. Although people, uh, some people contacted me yesterday were saying, well, actually, he hasn't changed his views. It's the Conservative Party, which is less Conservative and is more Liberal. So actually, he sort of said the same. But interestingly, was he even really a Conservative to start with, he was a 2019 Redwaller MP. He made a huge impression, connected with a lot of people, offended a lot of people as well with his remarks over City Can. But the fact is, he is now Reform UK's first MP. That is a very, very important uh, thing for them. It's a breakthrough for them. He has said, uh, Lee Anderson has previously committed to having a by-election if people uh, change parties. He, he uh, voted for a piece of, a piece of uh, a motion in regard to that from a Conservative MP called Anthony Mangle. But he's not going to stand in a by-election. He says, like, a, a general election could be called at any minute. Rishi Sunak, if he wants to do that on the 4th of May, when there are lots of other uh, elections, Mayor of Manchester, Mayor of London, local elections in England to be called, he needs to make that decision in the next 10 days or so. But it looks unlikely that'll happen. Matthew, worth noting here that he has never defected to a different party whilst being a welcome member of mm. the party that he was in. Both times he's been suspended and hasn't necessarily had a choice. <coughs> For me, this actually isn't a Lee Anderson story. It's a Rishi Sunak Quite story. Quite agree with you, right? my friend. This is a man that Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, appointed as the deputy chairman of the ruling party. 
So what does that say about our Prime Minister's judgment? Well, do you know what's really interesting? And I'm so glad you said that. And I don't know what you think about this, Pete and Nick, but I keep saying this every single day. When he walked slowly up Downing Street to that lectern, after all the chaos and all the frivolity, he was really, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do it differently. He employed Gavin Williams that day. An absolute joke who was gone within 46 days. This is an appalling example of Richie Sunak's judgment. If, if, if Lee Anderson, it's like the Suella Bravman thing, to get the job he did a pack with Suella Bravman, <laughs> to appeal to the Red Jeez Wall. He's the record, Jeremy. Come on, but it's true. To appeal to the Red Wall, Richie Sunak in Islington, think, Islington, wherever, thinks I'll employ Lee. Did he have any? Anthony Lee Anderson Barney. was always going to be a problem to Richie yes, Sunak, he was. right? He has a right to speak out, but this, Matt's right, this is appalling judgment by the PM again. Every party is a coalition. Get, keeping people together, especially in the Conservative Party at the minute, is like herding cats. The idea with Lee Anderson being uh, deputy chairman of the Conservative Party was to say to that part of the Conservative Party, to say to a number of Red Wall MPs, not all Red Wall MPs, but a number of Red Wall MPs on the right of the party, actually you're being listened to. And Lee Anderson, they tried to get him back. Bad judgment, they, they yes to, or no? Bad I, judgment. I think it, it, it's the. I think he's boxed in. I don't think he had much of a a choice, really, mm. to try to hold the Conservative Party together. There are uh, questions at the moment. Alicia Fitzgerald, my colleague, was being told yesterday that more MPs may defect to Reform UK this week. We're also told that if 10 MPs defect to Reform UK, I don't think it's going to happen, but if they do, Rishi Sunak will be forced to call a general election. Why They're, would that... Why, why, I'm interested in this. Why well, would because, that, how could he hold that against them? Because support would be would be draining and away and people would say, you know, that you know this the time had come for a general election. Listen, I think Rishi Sunak is under a huge amount of pressure, not just because of Lee Anderson, but because of lots of other factors. And the fact is that he wants to hold a general election in November, but he may not have an option. It may have to be before that. Can I just very quickly jump in here on Lee Anderson? I mean, he and I have had a few ding-dongs in person before, though we get on all right, because I can see the good in him, I can see the good in most people. Not People aren't all bad. I'm not all good, not all bad. He made Islamophobic comments about Sadiq Khan, for which he has refused to apologise. I interviewed Richard Tice, leader of reform, even if Nigel Farage is a sort of spiritual leader, for my podcast, 20 Questions With, and I said to Richard Tice, can you be emphatic that there is no place for Islamophobia? Can you utterly reject it? He said, I utterly, totally reject it. And now he has welcomed into the bosom of his party as his only MP a man who has refused to apologise or acknowledge that he made Islamophobic comments. There's something else as well for me. I don't know what Nick thinks. I, 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 I get... You say change the record. We have a Prime Minister who wasn't elected by the British people. Why the hell should Lee Anderson sit in the Commons representing his constituency unless a majority of that constituency want him as their MP? It but makes a do. joke of our... Demo demo but he was he was democratically elected. But n he wasn't but under the banner of reform. reform. Not, I understand. And that's where I think yeah, it's wrong. Under the banner of reform. Uh, just talking generally now about what Lee Anderson seems to stand for. He repeatedly said yesterday, I want my country back. He's not the only person saying this, but what does he? What is he referring to specifically? Well, you'd Who have, does he want his country back from? You'd have to ask ask Lee Anderson that question. But to me, it is dog whistle stuff. Yeah. What is he? What is it? What was so great about 1970s or 1980s England or Britain that Lee Anderson wants back? I, I'm going to be careful what I say next. I might leave it to you, Peter, to explain that. <laughs> well, it's interesting from Lee Anderson's perspective, and I think a lot of people will uh, find something in that statement. I think there are a lot of people who feel it's not a racial thing, it's not it's it's more a cultural thing. It's not even about other cultures necessarily, but it's about a British way of life that Lee Anderson would talk about. He would talk about the idea of England, the idea of the UK and what it, what it was previously and what it has now become. I think a lot of people feel that there is no control, there is no sense that uh, you know, the police are out of control, the public institutions, when, you can't get a GP's appointment. Yeah. You know, there, there are lots of ideas around that. Look, some people will take that as a kind of... As, as, as Matthew says, it's a dog whistle thing. But he, he was, he was thrown, thrown out of the party for Islamophobia, for Islamophobia and so when... people will not, will not make the assumption. What do you but think, you're what do you saying think it's bigger, right? He wants people to take exactly. from it. Exactly. Well, I watched the press could, conference. Let me just give me one Go second. On. Um, he, my friend, um, he <laughs> could make the... Uh, All right, Poirot. He can actually make the argument, can't he? He says, I'm not saying... I'm not being racist. I'm saying I want to go back yeah. to a particular time or place. But this is coming from a man who is a senior figure within the Tory party, the party that's been in power for 14 years, during which time we've seen austerity measures We've seen the he, collapse of the police. He didn't, seen... so, he didn't seem very happy with how the, go the government was being was and running yet, the country. Why were you the deputy party chairman? My problem with Lee Anderson, exactly. apart from the voters need to do it, I'm with her. I, it's not right.
So I don't well, think let me he... answer that as well. He but voted... do you think that there is a rise in anti-Muslim, <clears throat> Islamophobic? We, we know that there is a rise in it. But with figures like him getting the limelight, as mm. we are giving him this morning, do you think that there is going to be a further increase in anti-Muslim rhetoric? Well, it enables and it empowers, right? Mm. I mean, we've already had George Galloway elected yep. to the House of Commons. Now, who have we got? We've got Lee Anderson as a Reform Party MP. This is worrying stuff. And it, it, where has our country gone, by the way? We're all still chatting happily away in our country. How can it, you Lee, say it and not him, then? Well, Lee Anderson... Well, say what? Where's our he country? Was no, no, I was, I, I, I was no, but being ironic. I was saying, we've, oh. uh, we've still got our country. Lee Anderson should have come with me to Twickenham on Saturday to watch England beat Ireland in rugby. We were absolutely bouncing. There is still a strong sense of Englishness but, and but, Britishness. But with, with respect, listen, Richard Tice was there with several people from here, but here, here's the thing, right? I understand if you get thrown out of a party for Islamophobia comments, then people will think that everything you say... I'm interested he in your question. He got thrown out for not apologising. What, what, yeah, absolutely. What, what does he mean? You're saying, Pete, he means to what? Go back to the old days, go back to... Because if you look at... No, he's, he's talking specifically. He... he claims, and he believes this conspiracy theory, that Islamist extremists are not only in control of Sadiq Khan, but in control of other institutions in the UK. He's a conspiracy theorist. There are, I guess... Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure he would deny that, uh, Nick, and he would say that... Um, he said about yeah. the Sadiq Khan. He's, he's, I'm not saying... He's Listen, saying... he made false comments about Sadiq Khan. Yeah. And, you know, he is, Sadiq Khan is not controlled by Islamists. Sadiq Khan is, has got 24-hour police protection from armed police officers because of threats from Islamists. And we need to be Precisely. really clear about that. It was a false statement. He's got... I... From Islamists to threatening Sadiq Khan. Yes, yes. Right, that, that okay. is, that... So, you... just to be really clear, because I don't want to, you know... Be accused of libeling anybody, um, but he has not. He's refused to apologise for the comment he made about City Khan. All, right. all yes. he has said is that he used clumsy language. Yeah. But he wrote a whole piece in the Daily Express telling us why his comments were not Islamophobic yeah, exactly. and not racist. We can have our own views on this, but we now live in a society where someone who was Home Secretary until just the other month, Suella Braverman is saying very similar things, saying that the Islamists are in charge now, that the anti-Semites are in charge. The rhetoric has been ramped up and ramped up. Is it any surprise that we've seen rises in Islamophobia as well as rises in so anti-Semitism? I'm not defending Lee Anderson. I'm not defending what no, he course, said. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't defend it because it's false and I believe it's racist. The other point that is related to that is that a lot of people do feel that the country is out of control. They yeah. do feel when they watch the Palestine solidarity campaigns uh, protests, for example, that there are uh, clearly anti-Semites, there are clearly people there who are saying racist things, who are supporting Hamas, for example, and they feel that their country is out of control. And maybe what Lee Anderson says, I want my country back, that can mean a lot of different things but, to but a lot I, of people. Exactly, I, I that's think, what I, I mean, is we, that he's using I, this catch-all term. And for me, that can mean one thing, for you, it can mean yeah. another. Um, is that lazy politics? Well, or is it clever? Or it could be very smart politics. I mean, yeah. the, thing, the thing with Lee Anderson is he connects with people. There is no doubt about that. He is a politician who people recognise, who people know about, who people, uh, as I say, connect with. They, they see him saying something that no other MP but is, is saying. There, but, Pete, is there, is there substance? I watched that press conference yesterday, which was as interesting. And, and, and I was come away from it and <laughs> said this to Nick this morning. You're going to laugh at me. They're not very intelligent, most of our MPs, are they? I mean, he, did, he he's not had that press conference. Is it, is it just one-line sound bites? Hear me out, because we're going to sit here and several people will think, is he being Islamophobic? Other people will think, is he talking about the fact that there's crime and there's, there's knife crime and gun crime, the police don't seem to be anywhere on our streets. There's people coming to our country, there's people taking the mickey and sitting on the dole and not working. There's all sorts of stuff. Does he mean that? Because he's a soundbite king, there's no substance, so nobody knows. They're going to speculate, aren't they? I'm amazed, by the way, that he's gone to reform. And I absolutely maintain, I don't care what anybody says, he should call a by-election. I think it is fundamentally wrong, as much as I think that it's wrong that... Well, he, he, he said, I mean, Lee Anderson signed a petition or, or voted for a motion to say that by-elections... So how the happen. hell do you take the well, man well, seriously? Well, he, his point is that a general election could be called at any minute. If Rishi Sunak calls a general election in the next 10 days, I don't think he's going to do that, but then we'll have an election in May. But the point with Lee Anderson is that... You know, I don't know how intelligent he is. I haven't done an IQ test, whatever. The point is that he connects Resonates. with people. He says that he resonates. Stupid, yeah. I don't think he's stupid. He's sort of a sort of rough cut, as it were, but he's not stupid. Just on this point about the, the, our streets, Peter, what you were talking about, these, uh, these protests. I'm a Londoner, born and bred. I live in London. I go about my business in London. I don't have a sense that our capital city is being taken over. And I'll just point you to one example. There was a march on, say, the 17th of February 
There were 30,000 demonstrators. I wouldn't actually touch those demonstrations myself with the barge guard because I know there will be some anti-Semites on there. There were only 12 arrests mm. out of 30,000 people. Now, some Many people, people might, say there should be a lot more. Well, some well, people exactly. say that the police we aren't doing their job, but we can talk morning. about Can I just jump in two uh, but, things? Oh, okay. I, know, I don't know, but there's two things. One is, what is a barge pole? And secondly, <laughs> have you noticed what he said? He had Lee Anderson on his podcast, 20 questions. No, no, we... Richard twice. You guys Richard should be invited. Well, I was going to say, we haven't been invited, have we? <laughs> well, thank you so much to Peter Cardwell <laughs> go and Matthew Sutherland. Let's take a look at some of this morning's front pages now. The Times say Boris Johnson is expected to campaign for the Conservatives in red wall seats in the north of England and the Midlands ahead of the general election. The Telegraph leads with Rishi's pledge to build more gas power stations to avoid any risks of blackout. Oh, and God. finally, the sun cries, lay off Kate, as the paper issues a warning to social media trolls who bullied the Princess of Wales over her recent Mother's Day photo disaster. Well, sticking with that royal story, as Kensington Palace has refused to release the original portrait taken of the Princess of Wales and her children. This is after Kate confirmed she had edited the image of her family before release. A lot of people up in arms about this. The photo was the first official picture, of course, released of the princess since she underwent planned abdominal surgery in January. So there's a big furore. Well, joining us now is royal journalist Pandora Forsyth. Good morning, Pandora. What did you make of Kate's statement yesterday? Morning. Oh, bless her. It's just it's just not the right time for it at the moment, is it? Um, nothing she say is, is going to go down well, whether it's good um, or bad in, in people's opinion, because they want to see her back at work, but she needs time to rest. I mean, it was lighthearted slightly. We've all been there. We've all edited a photo. The issue is, uh, in this circumstance, is there was a rumour mill online and conspiracy theories, uh, you know, all sorts. Uh, and as Kensington Palace said last week, social media madness. Um, and it really has been. So nothing uh, she could have done or said yesterday would have taken that away. And unfortunately, it's just happened at the wrong time. The king is receiving cancer treatment and she's also out of action. So anything that the royal family does at the moment is under a microscope and, uh, and has gone over with a fine tooth comb. Um, Pandora, can we believe the statement that came out yesterday? Because at the end of the day, there's going to be such a a lack now of trust in what Kensington Palace is putting out there. True. I'm absolutely against anybody, you know, bullying Kate. I think no matter what has gone on, she's had an operation, she's not been very well, she should be left alone. This has obviously put fuel on, on the fire. But can we even trust yeah. that those words were coming from Kate? Because Kensington Palace seemed to be having a PR disaster. Yeah, I completely, um, totally agree with you, a PR disaster indeed. I think the issue here is, is the uh, revelations came to light at about 10 o'clock at night. And then the news agencies who were about to release the kill notice um, on this image that got sent to them, apparently did try and go to Kensington Palace that evening and say, look, th this has come up with manipulation when we're putting it through our systems. We kind of need comment back. And Kensington Palace allegedly didn't get back to them in time, which then, led to them sending out the kill notices because of editorial reasons, because the royal family still has to abide by the same rules, especially in the, you know, the, the rise of AI and, and fake news. And, 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 you know, whenever they get sent an image, then it's, then it's reassuring that they put them through the systems, because I think lots of people don't actually realise that, um, and perhaps a little naive to, to what we have to do now in the, in the world of journalism and the digital age. But because they left it so long before they gave um, a response in the morning I think it just built up completely overnight and because the royal family is on an international stage mm -hmm. it led to well, as they said social media madness um, the other week and anything that she does at the moment uh, will uh, will will cause that Pandora and, can um, I jump in a second yeah. can I jump in a second yeah. and, and ask you because I'm, I'm sort of listen I, I understand the Ferrari I still 24 hours on, can't see what Nick's telling me. But she's absolutely right. Everybody's talking about it. Of course, the, 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 the conspiracy theorists who have been, you know, at large over the last few weeks and months, the issue about this is, what an appalling... I mean, yes, she's ill, presumably. I'm not... That's her business. But they have fueled the flames of those people who will spend hours on keyboards saying, this is happening, that's happening, the other's happening. And, and, and we find ourselves in a slightly strange position. 
because you sort of want to leave this woman alone if she's ill. You don't want to bully. But Piers Morgan last night saying they should release an, the original image. You're nodding. If they do that, that'll be scrutinised. This is an absolute cluster mess, isn't it? And you know what word I was going to use. I mean, it really is a PR disaster, man. No, no, it is completely. Um, and I think they need to completely reassess um, their comms uh, on this. And also, it doesn't put um, Prince William in a very good light either. He's having to pick up the pieces as well on the stage yesterday. He had the Commonwealth event and he was there with Camilla. But nothing is going um, in their favour at the moment at all. Um, and they did try and do this sort of picture op outside Windsor Castle last night. Um, I assume that was planned, where Kate was in the car but turned turning her head away from the camera to try and reassure people and, and sort of settle it all down. But that didn't help either. Um, I think they Nicola, just... To, let me ask they, you a question they, that Nicola put to me yesterday. Um, mm. There are a lot of people in this country who do not like uh, Meghan Markle and Harry. I am one of them. Mm. Nicola is on the other side. That is absolutely fine. Mine is because I'm a royalist and I don't like what they've done. This is the first time, though, to be fair, that the Prince and Princess of Wales have had to handle the scrutiny that comes to those two on a daily basis. And we always say they invite it. Well, the Prince and Princess of Wales have invited this with their complete and utter... Well, the, the, the problem with this, I mean, the, the light is shone on them, right? Of their own making. Uh, yeah, well, uh, exactly. Um, and because there was such a long time period um, from 10 o'clock at night and obviously the comms team were waiting for the green lights off Catherine and William and it, it just didn't happen in yeah. time. So throughout the night, we've got, you know, the uh, the British press, you know, putting out on their front pages or changing them over within a matter of minutes. And then you've also got the US press leading overnight, which, which just caused a media storm. And unfortunately... They've, uh, unfortunately, I suppose for them, they've been on the positive side of the press for the last couple of years, and they probably weren't they weren't expecting this this sort of um, uh, this sort of backlash from it. But if they had just stuck to their original plan of saying Catherine won't be seen Absolutely. until back after Easter, allow the madness to happen instead of breaking the silence. I mean, they kind of shot themselves in the foot, really. They have indeed. Well, thank you so thank much you. to Royal Journalist Pandora Forsyth for joining us this morning. Uh, still to come on Talk Today, four million people could abandon work permanently as the number of benefits surge and electric cars can't travel as far as previously claimed. I can attest well, to that. We are not doing this again, are we? We had Cla Craig Phillips on yesterday to tell a story about an electric car and just as he was getting to the juicy bit, his thing froze. Uh, former Home Office Minister Claire Pierce all the Zoom. time's column... What? His Zoom froze. What did I say? Well, just do the link. I've given up. I'm uh, getting Times old. columnist Hugo Rifkin will be here with Claire Pearsall to take us through this morning's papers. Is do what? stay with us. What? It's six twenty-six. What? What? Froze? He said his thing. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, uh, it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested 
Alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to you Talk Today. It is 6.30 a.m. We'll have the weather in just a moment, but here's what else is coming up in the programme. There are claims that migrants are increasingly converting to Christianity to boost their asylum claims. We'll have that and more in the papers next. Before, oh, excuse me, <laughs> put my teeth in. Just four <laughs> seven, we'll be discussing how schools should handle gender issues as a government consultation, uh, ish. As a government consultation has claimed today. Yes, I'm going to stick up for my esteemed colleague. <laughs> that was written wrongly. And Shabana Herm will be here before eight. Listen, forget Chelsea Newcastle and that great game last night. First day of the Cheltenham Festival, the Irish will descend on the Cotswolds. We will let you know everything you need to know about a place where 300,000 pints of Guinness will be eaten <laughs> or even drunk this uh, uh, this week. Well, first, we're Naz, what is the weather looking like? Please save us. We're having a yeah, mare. We're having a mare. It's going <laughs> to rain, isn't it? It is going to oh. rain, but we've finally got rid of the easterly winds. So, so? That, so that means it's not feeling that cold anymore. Right. So you just get soaking wet without being wet and cold. Yeah, and, and warm. Warm rain. <laughs> <laughs> Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good morning. Finally, we've got rid of the easterly wind, so that means that we are seeing temperatures rise because we've got more of a southwesterly flow, but that means we are also seeing lots of low-pressure systems coming in off the Atlantic, so it's going to remain unsettled over the next few days, and uh, it is going to be rather wet and windy, but temperatures are likely to go above average for the time of year. We could see highs up to around 16 degrees Celsius around midweek. The average for this time of year is around 11. This morning, though, as I said, there will be lots of wet weather, and there is this morning across many parts of England and Wales, away from the east, some heavy downpours, particularly out towards the west. For Northern Ireland and Scotland, on the other hand, bits and pieces of light and patchy rain or drizzle, except for Shetland and Orkney, it's wet and windy there. Now, that rain with heavy downpours will be steadily moving its way eastwards through this morning. Some tricky driving conditions likely, particularly across Across western parts of England and Wales. Patchy rain this mid-afternoon for central and southern parts of Scotland, northern Scotland, seeing lots of fine and dry weather and sunshine. Quite cloudy for Northern Ireland, but becoming drier there. And then for England and Wales, we'll see that rain linger across parts of the east towards this evening, eventually clearing away there. There will be some showery rain entering the north and west of England and Wales. Temperatures are going to be higher than they were recently, up to around 13 degrees Celsius, so up into double figures as that warmer air starts to spread across much of the UK. We are seeing an occluded front, though, heading towards parts of Ireland, Northern Ireland and Scotland overnight, some heavy down for northwest Scotland likely and the winds will also strengthen some of that rain also boring down towards the north and west of England and Wales but for most of the Midlands central southern and eastern England it is going to be cloudy and mainly dry and it is going to be mild night everywhere the uh, temperatures overnight not really falling much from the daytime highs so it will be noticeably mild now that uh, occluded front will be moving its way southwards through tomorrow to northern parts of England and Wales by mid-afternoon it therefore brightens up across much of Scotland although the north and west will see some uh, heavy showers it will be a sunny and fine day across Northern Ireland for much of the Midlands and central southern England, also mainly dry and sunny, but the north and west will be wet and cloudy.
Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Uh, thanks, Naz. Right, let's look through today's papers. First up, I don't know why I've done that. Uh, former Home Office uh, Minister. Former Home Office Minister. I'll have that. Yeah, we, yeah, it wasn't <laughs> a minister at all, an advisor, Claire Pearsall, and Times columnist Hugo Rifkin. You do are Good a morning. Times columnist, though. You can talk a bit wrong today. So far uh, as I know. Welcome on an all. Now, listen, we're obviously the Princess <clears throat> of Wales, the picture. I don't want... We're, we're talking about it all the time. Just a quick comment from you both. Um, the conspiracy theorists, like Nicola, have been fueled, right? Not a conspiracy theorist, just pointing out facts, Jeremy. Spent all of yesterday going, that cuff doesn't match with that finger. <laughs> Thoughts? You've got 30 seconds each. OK, when I saw it, I thought, what a beautiful photograph. Yes. And then the rabbit hole opens up on social media and you can get lost. I think we need to leave her alone now. I think everyone's pulled this photograph to pieces. It shouldn't have been put out there. Let's just leave her to recover. Piers okay. Morgan is saying you must release the original. It's a disgrace. It isn't going away. I think they should because I don't think the original would resemble that photograph. I don't think it was taken. But what do week. you want yeah. to know from having the original out? Look, it's not. I'm not what do you want to know from I think the original people out? People should lay off Kate. They're absolutely. The son are absolutely right. That they shouldn't be going for Kate as an individual. But I think that this speaks to a wider issue of trust between Kensington Palace, the Royal Rota, and the British public. Hugo. Point one, it's hardly the princes in the tower, right? <laughs> so what? Uh, point two, just employ a professional. Your yes. photos are rubbish. Yeah. Don't take photos yourself and email them to Reuters. Pref employ a professional. You're yeah. going to be king. Do better. <laughs> there you are. There Absolutely nailed on. Um, and, then, and then Lee Anderson. Again, we've got loads to do, so just a brief comment. 30 seconds. Claire Pearsall. 30p Lee has become three-party Lee. It certainly has. In six years, he's been a little bit fluid with his uh, political ideologies. Um, I just... I don't know what to say. I really don't. When I watched the sort of 30p Trump Act in front of a flag yesterday, it was so tightly scripted, clearly not by him. He was reading out the words of his new master. <laughs> and having a right old pop at the party that he supported, that has been in power for 14 years, and apparently the country has lost. Well, where's it gone? He wants his country back. Well, you should have worked harder then. Hugo? I just really can't get over this. He one. said in January that it wasn't conceivable that he would join reform. Now he has joined reform. The only thing that's changed since then is that he got sacked. Right? <laughs> he says he he says he wants his country back. He actually just wants his job back. I think I think um, the only thing I've in, the thing I've enjoyed most about this actually is Quentin Letts' sketch in the Daily Mail where he describes Richard, Richard Tice as that rich man who looks like a hairdresser, <laughs> which I thought was just a beautiful, beautiful observation. Um, Very good. And interestingly, you say about Lee Anderson saying that, he also said that, uh, that any MP who, who, you know, changes party should, should call a by-election. Now he's saying you're not going to do that. Yeah, he did sign a, a private member's bill that suggested that everyone that was subject to this should have a recall petition and go out to the electorate. But when it comes to him, clearly not. And he's using the excuse that it's now too expensive. I think he's scared. I think the important point here is there's this really, really patronising thing a lot of people on the right do that goes, well, if we're, if we're losing the red wall, what we need is more people like Lee Anderson. I know. Right? Mm. And, I mean, like, it's, it's a large part of the country full of diverse, <laughs> educated, yeah. intelligent, thoughtful people. And I say that as somebody yeah. from Blackpool. Like, um, I'm Blackpool North, but obviously there's going to be a recall position in Blackpool South. And it really frustrates me to have the North, the yeah. red wall, <laughs> categorised as somebody like Lee Anderson. It's, it, it's like you're going for Scotland and you get Jimmy Cranky. It's yeah. just, it's, it's yeah. So She's scary. no longer got a job. Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy Cranky. Oh, right. Um, it's just so stereotypical and, and yeah. frankly, offensive. But what do you say about like the that. people who were speaking who said he speaks no. for us? Well, yeah, good for them, but that's three people on a Vox Pop. Um, but what I saw yesterday are you, was that. Are you crying our Vox Pops? No, 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 but that is just three people, isn't it? Well, I know, but it could have been 33 people. And listen, we're all, we're all agreeing on this anyway. But I, what I saw yesterday mm. was a man who was very fragile, actually. You could see that when there was a little giggle about a, a faux pas mm. to do with a flag covering his face at the beginning, he was, who's laughing? Like, this is a really fragile, a I think, yeah. insecure yeah. man who probably doesn't know what he's doing. But he was also the man that pulled out of voting in the way that he told everybody he was going to vote because some Labour MPs giggled at him. I think, I think you should also... I, I, I genuinely think Matthew Stadler made the best point just now when he said, uh, I don't think this is about Lee Anderson, I think this is an absolute example of Rishi Sunak's incredibly bad judgement yet again. That he appointed I... him in the first place or that he let him go? 
that he appointed him in the first yes. place to, to, yeah. to, to, to get and that that support that Nick's talking about, like the Suella Braverman deal. Yeah. The man who wanted mm. to do change, I think, has absolutely destroyed... I, I, I think Rishi Sunak has fallen on his face numerous times and, and hasn't been up to the job, Clara, really believe it. But it's that political judgment that yeah. we look at on a frequent basis. He doesn't have it. You gave Lee Anderson a platform, an enormous platform, which led him into being a television host, being all over the media, and now everybody's attention is back on him again. Absolutely. Just... Is that what you think 30 seconds is, by the way? What's that? <laughs> you, you gave them 30 seconds each, and then you yeah. keep asking them more questions. Well, listen, I always, it always goes on longer than I first assumed. There we go. You just wait till Rishi Sunak puts out a photo. Then all hell will break loose. They're not, not his... my children. That's not his head. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be taller than Lee Anderson. Right, Claire, we're going to move on That's to not the front page of the Express now, a story about migrat uh, migrants sorry, converting to Christianity. Yeah, now, this story's been around a while. We, we covered it on here a couple of months ago, in fact. And it does look like some migrants, asylum seekers, are... Uh, gaming the system by converting over to Christianity. And there are some churches who are using all of their resources, I would suggest. And they, the Express highlights one particular church in Dunstable. Never before have we had Dunstable front and centre of all of this, but it is down the road from a Holiday Inn, which is housing migrants. And they've seen an enormous increase in people wishing to convert, uh, a lot of certificates being signed, and you... Uh, it's not surprising. Now, the Home Office should not take religious beliefs as one of the top reasons for granting asylum. Mm. They really shouldn't. It shouldn't matter on that. And it's beggar's belief that you have people coming from countries where they have been born into the Muslim faith, they have always been supportive, they want to, to come over here for very different reasons, and then suddenly they find faith in the Christians. I, I, you know, I don't buy it. I think the Home Office needs to look at this properly and also the Church of England. And it isn't the case, is it, Hugo, that, um, you know, you will automatically be accepted into the UK if you were a Christian. I think a lot of them are doing this in order to get support from vicars, priests, people, clergymen within the church. Maybe they come here and realise that Britain is a country that is quite hostile to Muslim migrants and they decide they don't want to be... I mean, look, Where would they get that pe idea from, pe I wonder? Well, precisely. Look, pe people have... People have always changed their faith for utilitarian reasons. Where I live, hundreds of white middle-class parents pretend to be Christian to get their kids into school. Uh, you can go back <laughs> through history. The Israeli, our first Jewish prime minister, converted pretty much for social advantage. You know, I mean, it's... it's, it's we, we kid ourselves that the, the, the religion is more than a lifestyle choice for a lot of people. I would, I would be very surprised if all of this is quite as insincere and calculating as it looks. It's people who want to fit in in the society that they've arrived in and are, and are told that this is the way to do it. People who want to assimilate. And what has yeah. been the criticism of, of people from, from Muslim countries in the past few weeks has been, oh, you know, from people like Lee Anderson, I'm not saying necessarily him, but people of his ilk saying there's no assimilation, etc. Well, here are people yeah. coming over to the UK, as you said, who want to assimilate and are changing their religion in order to do so. It's, it's also, it's a big it's a big deal. A lot, a lot of these countries, if you are then sent back, having converted to Christianity, you're in a lot of trouble. But it know. seems that they tend to convert once their initial asylum claim has been denied, which strikes me as a I little I wrote down suspicious. playing the system. I'll go back to it again and again. The system's crap, excuse my French. The Home Office is not fit for purpose. And until we sort out a system that manages to say, you are genuine refugees, you are not a genuine refugee, you need to return, we will find these stories and these problems again and again. And we can sit here and we can say that they're, they're doing it, these migrants, to, to, to gain uh, an advantage. Other people can say, no, it's trying to grow into the culture. The fact of the matter is we've got an immigration problem which doesn't show any signs of getting any better because we have a system that is not for purpose, and that's the frustrating thing every single day, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, it isn't going to go away. It's one of these issues that the Home Office is failing on many fronts. How did you work in such an appalling place and not go <laughs> mad? Do you know what? It was one of the best places I think no, I have ever worked. Every... What? It's one of the best places I've ever worked. Every single day people say to me it's not fit for purpose, it's rubbish. Yeah, you're right. And there are massive, massive challenges. But if you broke it down and you had immigration as a standalone department, you would be able to deal with the backlog that you've got and the problems that you have. So why haven't it's politicians over decades worked that out? I don't know. I've been spouting it now for at least three years since I left the place because I do think it's enormous. And I don't know why they don't. I, I really think they need to take it out of the control of the Home Secretary, make it its own department, and you would have somebody who is more accountable.
Very interesting. Yes, indeed. Uh, Claire, we're going to move on to a different story. Oh, no, sorry, Hugo. We're going to talk about this <clears throat> story, front page of The Guardian. Oh, it's all good fun this morning, isn't it? <laughs> a Tory party donor has said some awful things about Diane Abbott and it's come to light. What a remarkably shocking story. Uh, this is a man called uh, Frank Hester. He is the, currently the Conservative Party's biggest donor. Uh, he's given them a lot of money. He had a meeting uh, with uh, his staff at the company he runs where he said a variety of racist things that weren't entirely about Diane Abbott, the Labour MP, but a lot of them were. Um, he, said, uh, he, said she, he said she makes you want to hate all black women uh, and that she should, she should be shot. And then he went on to explain that he wasn't a racist, uh, although uh, a, a quote... I can't read out all of it because there's a rude word in the middle of it. He also said in the same meeting, we take the P out of the fact that all the Chinese girls sit together in Asian corner. This is him explaining to his staff that he's not a racist. Uh, look, it's... Uh, we can sort of go through the various ways in which his comments and behaviour were horrifying. The point is what the Conservative Party does about it. And what the Conservative Party does about it is return his money and say they don't want anything to do with him. Otherwise, they've got a problem. This is a guy who spent 15 grand, allegedly, on um, Rishi Sunak's... A, a helicopter flight for Rishi Sunak. Oh, God, yep. it gets worse, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, my yeah. God. Just... I mean, is that really? I mean... But I... Has, the, has the PM said anything? Has he, has he come out fighting and said, you know, absolutely, we're going to reject this money, there's no room for racism in the party? The Conservatives, I don't believe, have said yet that they're going to, they're going to return the money. Right, Labour's right. called for them to... I think it's, I think it's uh, £10 million they'd have to return, yeah. so it's quite a lot. Claire, um, quick yeah. comment. Yeah, I mean, that money should be returned, and I don't see how you can say that it's not about race or gender, which is uh, what he said in his quotes, when you're talking about race hating all black women. Yeah. Well, that's gender and race wrapped up in one. No, send the money back and send him packing. Here Very interesting. Well, thank you so much to Hugo thank and you Claire. Again. They'll be back in just under an hour. Well, still to come, has the government got its gender in school guidance right? The consult consultation on its advice closes today. We'll speak to a trans teacher to find out what it means for kids. This is Talk Today. Good morning. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Whirl -missing. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't <laughs> too keen on that. I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, 
has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're that supposed to was another that. era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to Talk Today. It is 6.48. Now, the Department for Education's consultation on gender issues among pupils closes today. The proposals could make it mandatory for teachers to tell parents if their child is questioning their gender. But critics have warned this could prevent young people from being able to explore their gender identity. Well, joining us now from Bristol is teacher and journalist Debbie Hayton, who believes that if the government is serious, their advice wouldn't be guidance, it would be law. And discrimination barrister Robin White, who thinks this guidance should be torn up and thrown away as it could end up alienating students. So what is the right thing to do here? Debbie, can you go first for us? Can you just tell us a little bit about this legislation uh, and why you're against it? Well, the, uh, it's guidance rather than legislation, and it's guidance from the government to schools on how to uh, help transgender identified children, children who are questioning their gender, as the saying goes. Uh, my, uh, my problem is that it's guidance rather than, uh, rather than something mandatory. So schools can pick and choose guidance. They can choose whether to take this guidance or not. And that leaves teachers like myself still in a vulnerable position of knowing what the best thing to do is. And Robin, having said that, oh, sorry, sorry, having said that, I broadly welcome what the government's got to say in that uh, these issues should be treated in the same way as any other issues in school, where where parents are routinely informed if there's some serious issue involving their children. Uh, Robin, Debbie's got a point there that it's quite difficult for teachers to know um, if there's no hard and fast rule. But at the end of the day. Is it really a serious issue if a child is questioning their gender identity? Is it something that they should be allowed to do without their parents having to be informed? Well, uh, unfortunately, the guidance as written would lead schools to act completely unlawfully. There are a couple of principles here. One is the best interest of the child principle. And whilst one would expect that the vast majority of parents are very supportive of their children act properly towards them, Schools commonly deal with circumstances where there is a difficulty between the child and their parents. And outing a child in this way to a set of unsupportive parents could very definitely not be in the best interest of the child. That's my... Listen, I, I'm not an expert. that Nick would know a lot more than me. I think it, as a parent, I'm, I'm probably going to say the wrong thing. I would really hope that my children would be able to talk to me. That does not in any way detract from the fact that there are kids whose parents, for want of a better phrase, ain't up to scratch. My concern would be, for the few whose parents aren't up to scratch, that parents who do a damn good job could face feeling, Debbie, that they are left out of the loop. And I'm being honest when I say to you both, that would absolutely infuriate me. Yes, there are some parents who you wouldn't routinely inform uh, inform issues in school. But that's a totally different matter. The vast majority of parents are involved with their children. Yeah. And we're risking situations where everybody knows in school that a child is experimenting with their gender. The teachers all know, the friends all know, every child in school knows, apart from the two parents. That is the ludicrous situation which we risk, which risk happening. And that's why this guidance is needed. But, Robin, is this actually a widespread issue? We know so often when there are debates mm. around anything to do with, with tr uh, trans or gender issues, it can be blown up out of proportion. But are there really that many children in school who don't feel like they are able to show their gender identity at home, even though they have good relationships with their parents? Or is it only those children who potentially would be in danger or certainly have safeguarding issues if their parents were to find out? Yeah, that, well, that's the judgment the school has to make. The school has to listen to the child and make a judgment as to whether they believe, back to the principal, 
it's in the best interest of the child in accordance with the safeguarding principles that are set out in statutory guidance called Keeping Children Safe in Education, known as CASEY. Uh, and they make that judgment based on the, the same considerations apply to someone, to a child who's coming out as gay at school. Mm -hmm. They're hopefully, the vast, vast majority of parents are supportive of their children, no matter who they turn out to be as they grow and develop. But exactly as the presenter has mentioned, there are a small number of parents who pose a difficulty. Um, I, I'm the presenter. Well done. Um, can I say something else that that, that is, it, it, as I say, I'm not I'm, I'm not an expert in any way. Um, I guess a lot of parents watching this, like me, and I, and I don't mean to in any way, I've done this long enough to disrespect people who 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 have that 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 situation in their lives. Do we fear that several or many children, Debbie, well, both of you really, could be pliable by their peer group. I know I'm not trying to trivialise it. I'm trying to ask, does, do, do we get to a point where social media, peer pressure, that people might try to change, uh, begin a process, and there's the danger, because as a parent, uh, do you know what I'm trying to say? I would want to know. I know, but, but we're not talking about anybody who's... Um, we're talking about social transitioning here, I believe, rather than mm. medical or certainly surgical we? transitioning. We're talking about somebody being referred to with a different pronoun in school um, and asking for teachers and their friends to do that, but not necessarily letting their parents know. Is that right, Debbie? Yes, we're talking about situations where the child changes the name in school, changes the pronoun in school, and all teachers are using that name and that pronoun routinely for the child until it comes to writing a school report when teachers are then told to use a different name on the school report. It's not fair, the pressure I on think teachers, it's totally is it? Wrong. I, 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 have to, I have to say that the, the pressure on teachers is it's ridiculous. Awful. But have you ever experienced that, Debbie, as a teacher? No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't. But it's widely re it's widely reported that 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 happens. And I just think it's wrong that parents are being cut out of the loop here. As Jeremy was saying, you know, children are picking these things up online. Social media is influencing them. Uh, the peer group is reinforcing this. And the two people in that child's life who are the, should be the most important people risk being cut out of these discussions. Which that is, is difficult. Wrong. But but Debbie, as a teacher, if you had a child coming to you saying that they were questioning their gender identity identity and you said well I'm gonna to have to tell your parents and they were begging you not to do that because of safeguarding issues what kind of situation well, would you find yourself in I'm a teacher so I'm used to the normal safeguarding rules that apply if a child makes a disclosure to me in school I don't I, I never say I'm going to talk, talk to your parents about that but I do I do let the child know that I will have to inform other colleagues in school right. as per normal safeguarding we procedures. have to we have, we have to, to leave it there but thank you both thank you both very so very much, much for joining us this morning teacher Debbie Hayton and who'd discrimination be a barrister Robin White well, who'd be a teacher who'd be a TV presenter lots more still to come on sorry today. are we reform UK have their first MP in former Tory deputy chairman Lee Anderson but how good a match is he for his new party this is Talk Today. It is 6.56. Good morning. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position. But I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking <laughs> and screaming. I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. 
What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh. Ooh. It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> that, that oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just for, yeah. minute, for, Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. This is Talk Today with Jeremy Kyle and Nicola Thorpe. A very good morning to you. It's 7am on Tuesday, the 12th of March. We're jolly and happy this morning. Uh, welcome to Talk Today. We're on TV, Ready Online and your smart speaker. These are Tuesday morning's top stories. Body blow. 30p Lee becomes three-party Lee as he defects to form. Can the Prime Minister survive losing yet another MP? I like what you did there. Check this. Back to Boris. The former leader is set to hit the campaign trail in a desperate attempt to win back Red Bull vote voters because apparently, you try saying that, he and Sunak's relationship has thawed somewhat. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, and a royal apology. The Princess of Wales says she's sorry for editing her Mother's Day photograph but fails to silence speculation online. Leave her alone, Poirot. <laughs> And wetter from the west, heavy rain is moving eastwards throughout today. Will there be anything drier in the forecast soon? I have the details for you later. Thank you, Madam Happy. Now, from the greatest newsreader in this studio, Emily Rose Adams, what's happening? That's so nice. Thank you. Good morning. Reports this morning suggest that the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, could call a snap general election if 10 Conservative MPs defect to Reform UK. It comes after Lee Anderson said he's been given the chance to speak out for millions of people up and down the country after defecting from the Conservative Party amid an Islamophobia row. The MP says he should be able to speak his mind. Political commentator Matthew Stadlins told Talk Today it's a major U-turn from Reform UK's leader from comments he made on his podcast. I said to Richard Tice, can you be emphatic that there is no place for Islamophobia? Can you utterly reject it? He said, I utterly, totally reject it. And now he has welcomed into the bosom of his party as his only MP a man who has refused to apologise or acknowledge that he made Islamophobic comments. Prince William has pressed ahead with his public duties despite the controversial photo editing row that surrounds his wife. The Prince of Wales attended an event bringing together Earthshot Prize winners last night after Kate was forced to apologise for any confusion over a family photograph that was issued by Kensington Palace, which she admitted editing. A 17-year-old boy has been arrested after three men were stabbed in Greater Manchester yesterday afternoon. Police say it was a targeted attack in Bury, and the injuries are not thought to be life-threatening. Two of the men have been released from hospital. The third is being kept in. A major Tory donor has apologised to Labour's Diane Abbott for allegedly saying she should be shot and made him want to hate all black women. Frank Hester, the chief executive of the Phoenix Partnership, which donated £10 million to the Tories last year, said his comments had nothing to do with her gender nor her colour of skin. 
And more than 900,000 young people who did not get their MMR jab as children are being invited to take up in a catch-up campaign amid a rising number of measles cases. The NHS is writing to 19 to 25-year-olds in London, Greater Manchester and the West Midlands, inviting them to book an appointment. There have been 733 cases of measles in England since October last year. Those are the headlines. I'll have another update in an hour. You know, you're, thank you so much. You know you're a new mum. I am, yes. Measles and all that. Would you get the jabs and yeah, stuff? Yeah. We used to get sent to parties, mate. Oh, I know, chicken pox parties. Yeah. I went to a chicken pox party when I was a kid because my brother had it. Mum invited all the kids round and I had it ten times worse than my brother. Absolutely. It's, it's, the way, yeah. it's the way forward. Listen, welcome Why to Tuesday. Why do that when you can have a vaccine? Absolutely. Uh, so, Lee Anderson defects to reform. That's three... Three underlined political parties in six years. People criticise him. If you watch the press conference yesterday, it was a little bit touchy, a little bit stroppy. Who's laughing? Who's laughing? Tice is crowing. The reform have their first uh, uh, MP. And we've asked, will more Tory MPs follow? We have it. People apparently are talking about it. They are indeed. As a you, you can get in touch via email. Uh, you can email talk today at talk.tv. You can tweet at talk.tv or you can text talk plus your message to 8722. Colin this is says, I worry about the Tories hijacking the reform party. It's a possible red flag for me. Uh, Derek, I've always voted Tory, but they have lost the plot so completely that I don't recognise them anymore. I can't see myself voting again. That's my issue. So disillusioned are people with our politicians that they won't vote. Uh, Ruth says the majority of current MPs are the ones responsible for the mess we are in. Their transfers, switches or crossovers to another party will not change things. Brian, I hope no Tories follow lead to reform. The problem is the political class. Watching them jump ship... Uh, to the rising party doesn't solve the problem. It allows the problem to persist. Talk today at talk.tv, text to 8722. It's right on five past seven. Yes, indeed it is. And our top story today, the Prime Minister is under renewed pressure after mm. Lee Anderson defected to Reform UK. The Ashfield MP, who'd been suspended for Islamophobic remarks, becomes the new party's first sitting MP. As I said just now, that's his third party in, in six years, so 30p lead to three-party lead. He was suspended as a Labour councillor in 2018. And speaking yesterday, he explained slightly nervously his decision. Have a listen, have a watch. Like millions of people in this country, I feel that we are slowly giving our country away. We are allowing people into our country that will never integrate and adopt our British values. Parliament doesn't seem to understand what many British people want. It is no secret that I've been talking to my friends in Reform for a while, and Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. And like millions of people up and down the country, all I want is my country back. Well, Talk TV's chief political commentator, Peter Cardwell, is back with us. And we're also joined by opinion and features editor at City AM, Alice Dempy. Peter, Reform have got their first MP. They certainly have. It's a massive boost for them. It's really interesting as well, the dynamics within that party, because Nigel Farage is their sort of uh, president, but Richard Tice is the leader of that party. Is Lee Anderson going to take instructions from either of those men? I'm not so sure. He's very much his own man. But yes, he is today a Reform MP, and that is a massive boost for them, it's not a, a massive shock. We'd heard, uh, indeed, a couple of weeks ago that Richard Tice and uh, Lee Anderson were having a chat about this, and then this uh, press conference yesterday confirms that news. Now, Alice, for me, we were saying this last day, delighted to have you on. Um, you can snipe from the sidelines that he's had three parties in six years. You can talk about an ideological journey. My issue is that in January he said he wouldn't jump ship, he has. Fine, that happens. He also voted to say that if a person mid-Parliament jumps ship, we should call a by-election, yet he's refusing to and saying it could be a May election. I get really angry that we have a Prime Minister... I don't care what Peter says to me. We have a Prime Minister who was not elected to be Prime Minister by the British people in 10 Downing Street. We now have politicians who think for six months they can take our taxpayers' money. They've been voted in representing one thing they don't agree with anymore. He should be out. There should be a by-election, surely. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's not a sort of constitutional principle that you have to face a by-election, but if you recall when uh, two MPs defected to UKIP back in, when was it, 2010-ish, that parliament, yep. um, they did face by-elections and, and then won, and that really added to their credibility. And I think the important thing to remember about Lee Anderson is that he hasn't quite defected. He got kicked out of the Tory party for his comments about Sadiq Khan. He was never a Conservative, really, to begin with. As you say, he was a Labour councillor, then a Conservative. 
I think and moves when he gets sacked or gets suspended, as we said earlier but, but as he, well. But he would say, of course, that this you know he hasn't changed. His values yep. and his views are very much the same. His view is the Conservative yep. Party has changed. And actually, his own uh, political views, which his constituents know well, because he's one of the most high-profile MPs in this country, haven't changed. Therefore, OK, he might have a different label, but actually he's he believing and saying and doing the same things. But a lot of his speech yesterday was anti-immigration. Yep. I would argue, as I'm sure many people would, that this version of the Tory party that we have now is the most hostile we have ever been to migrants, Alice. Yeah, I mean, if the, cons the current Conservative Party isn't hostile enough to migration for Lee Anderson, uh, well, then I think, yeah, that's an interesting position that he's in. I suppose from, from Reform's perspective, you know, th th they've made a big deal out of Lee Anderson joining, but he's not Nigel Farage. This is the issue. For Reform, what they, what they know what they really need to make a huge impact to the next elections for Nigel Farage to come back. Um, Lee Anderson... Does Lee Anderson win as a reform candidate? By election or general election? Yes or no? You're, you're, you're the political expert. I don't think so. I think Labour win in that constituency. It's a really interesting constituency. He's got a majority of about 5,000. There's a very interesting political grouping called the Ashfield Independents as well. They have 30 out of 35 seats on the local council and they came second in the general election in 2019. So it's a very weird constituency. And I think the thing to remember is that actually reform aren't really interested in government. They they are interested in smashing the existing Conservative well, Party. This is and they know that what they will do is split the right yeah. in the election. And, and, and well, the statement from Ashfield and Mansfield Conservatives says locally we regret that Lee Anderson had made the decision. It is clear that voting for reform cannot deliver anything apart than, from the Keir Starmer-led Labour government that would take us back to square one. Labour reform and the independents have no plan for Ashfield. Only the Tories are getting things done for Ashfield and delivering on priorities. So it sounds already as if it's local local association is saying, hold on a minute. Well, interesting. And also, if you look at some of the comments that Lee Anderson has made, within the last six months or so, he called Richard Tice, the leader of his new party, a pound shop Nigel Farage. So if you add the pound together with the 30p Lee, you get one pound thirty. But um, the See, a new career in stand-up doesn't beckon. It doesn't. <laughs> it just doesn't. She stole that from a tweet. Anyway, uh, but the point is as well that he's also said about reform. He said reform isn't the answer. Reform only leads to Keir Starmer being Prime Minister. Exactly the sentiments that his former association in Asheville are now expressing that you've just read out. Alice, I'd love your take on one thing. We touched upon it and then we're going to move on in, in the last hour. He said, I want my country back. People will jump up and down. He made Islamic uh, comments about Sadiq Khan. That, thank you. He'll say, it's, people, the critics will say, that's, that's what he's talking about. Others will say, no, hold on, he's talking about a fact that our country has no police on the streets. We have people coming in who should be sent back to their country because they're not refugees. Yes, we look after real refugees, but this country is a joke. We've got high crime. You can't see a dentist. You can't see a doctor. There's marches every single day. There's almost civil unrest. Is that what he's talking about or is he being racist? That's what I want to know. No, I think your viewers, you know, if you listen to their comments, that, that what they feel is exactly what you're expressing. This kind of plague on both your houses. And Lee Anderson has been on the same journey as he calls it, as many voters having, you know, in seats like his, having gone from Labour to the Conservatives and now feeling, well, in a sense, so do you all. And I think a lot of voters feel, feel the same way. I think Very there's an apathy out there. Well, we're going to move on to the next story now because Boris Johnson oh, allegedly on. is going to make a general election come back for the Tories. But in what way, Peter? He's well, this is really be interesting because we were sitting here yesterday talking about a plot to make Boris Johnson leader of the Conservative yeah. Party again by Judy McAlpine, one of the sort of Tory grandees who has lots and lots of money and is uh, fund <laughs> funding this kind of uh, backroom uh, plot. Now we're hearing that, and I think it's true actually, that relations have thawed between the kind of Sunak camps and the Boris Johnson camps that were previously daggers at dawn. So now Boris Johnson is going to help campaigning. He's not going to appear on stages with Rishi Sunak. He's not going to hold up his hand and say, this guy's a wonderful person. But he is probably going to go to the Red Wall, the Midlands, those kind of places that Boris Johnson really reached out and touched properly and brought in in the 2019 coalition. But what Jeremy, you're, you're just, I, I, your Jeremy, head's about to explode. So bass, Alice, right? And, and everybody knows I, I didn't have any time for Partygate. I absolutely understand that he was flawed. At least he had a personality. Rishi Sunak strides into dancing. I'm going to change stuff. It was chaotic. I disagree. I'm going to stab him in the back. I'm going to employ Williamson. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. His political judgment by the day is shown to be utterly ludicrous because he's now thawing relationships to get Boris Johnson to do his dirty work. I'd tell him where to go if I was Boris Johnson. He stabbed him in the back. I think Rishi Sunak's a disgrace I don't think man. Boris Johnson is there unwillingly, Alice. No. No, I think... point taken. <laughs> it does go. it does help, right? <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. Uh, Look at uh, follow. <laughs> and Boris Johnson has been, you know, his, the, the death of Boris Johnson's career has been prematurely announced many times before. Yes. So you'd be a fool to, to sort of to rule him out. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised at this apparent thawing because, as far as I know, these two people despise each other. So what's the benefit for either of them? Well, no, we, I get the benefit for Sunak. What's the benefit for Boris in kind of getting He loves involved? campaigning. He loves uh, being yeah. relevant. Yeah. He does love campaigning. Yes, of course he does. He loves That's being not relevant. the reason he loves... he's doing it. He's well, doing it, maybe he says, maybe he wants because to after back. the debacle that will undoubtedly, he will rise like a phoenix from the ashes of Sunak. Well, he won't be an MP. Now. You know, he's no plans currently anyway to stand in the next general election. Although, look, anything can happen. And as Alice completely correctly points out, never, ever underestimate Boris Johnson. You never know what he's going to happen. They'll parachute him into a safe seat, you watch. What's a safe seat? The present. Good point. <laughs> Henley. Very good point. Henley of Well, that, that's, that's the, 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 uh, the, the speculation, yeah, indeed. Kensington and Chelsea? I think he might well be worried that there'll, after this election, be no Conservative Party left for him to lead, so that might be playing into his thinking. One poll said the Conservatives could have as few as 25 MPs after the next I mean, election. That, I mean, that, isn't it? Uh, do, you, do you both, as, as, as expert commentators, well, one of you, <laughs> Alice, do you, oh, do you believe... Leave us alone. <laughs> yes, don't be horrible at <laughs> Do you think this Armageddon that we've been talking about for weeks... And we know the polls. You know, I always used to say about, like, trade unions, when they got the closed shop or they went to vote, you could shout and scream, but when you're thinking about the pound in your pocket... So on the day of the election, forget all the, the, the personalities and all the mistakes and the Scott Bentons and all that stuff. Do the British election... Are they going to destroy the Tories and believe that Labour will put more money in their pocket, or are we oversimplifying this election? I think the polls are soft. I think a lot of people who say that they aren't going to vote Conservatives will end up doing so. I also think turnout will be lower than people expect. But I also think the Labour vote is soft. I think there are a lot of people who are very, very annoyed with the Conservative Party, but when it comes to the crunch, they may not vote for them. I don't think we're going to have 25 Conservative MPs after the next election. What do you think? Give me a prediction. I think more, that, more like 200, but we'll see. With, a, with the majority of Labour? Yes, Labour majority, definitely. But what I, size? I think I think. What size? I mean, not as big as people think, not not a huge majority, 50? maybe 50, maybe 50. Interesting. Alice? I think bigger than that, I think that they will win a lot of seats in Scotland um, yeah. and I think that reform will split quite a lot of seats in the Red Wall. Yeah. Um, so I think, I, I agree with you that turnout's going to be low, but I think that the map is kind of redrawing itself. Yeah. Very interesting. We'll see. Fascinating. I mean, I never make predictions about the future. Um, and also, you know, could we ever get through alive without you mentioning Gavin Williamson or Ciela Braverman or Rishi Sunak doing a, a deal with Ciela Braverman? I mean, no one knows. I've got my bingo sheet, actually. Have you got your bingo sheet, so, have yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Have you crossed off Gavin Williamson? I have crossed off Gavin Do you want to tell that story? Do you want to tell that story? What story? In the old days when we did radio oh, together, bingo. I didn't know about this. They, they, they came up with this thing called Kyle Bingo, and I had no idea. And I have one a Kyle day, Bingo my, card. My boss rang me on air, and he went, I'm one dead dad away from a full house. What are you talking about? He said, you mentioned your dad's dead every day. He said, I'm on the train, I'm listening, right? If you get, if you just say dead dad, I'll get across. I went, so what's the prize? He said, a bottle of wine. We've been playing it for six months. I, I was missing... So you're saying I say the same thing the, every day? The one I was missing was, and I genuinely believe this. If you said <laughs> if I genuinely believe this, I could have crossed that off my Kyle Bengo card. When I was on maternity leave, I got quite quite drunk in the morning to play the Jeremy Kyle drinking game. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time ago. Let's move on. Don't say that. Oh, God. No, Come on, when Poirot. When I was on Jay maternity leave. Why are you drinking when you're on maternity? You're breastfeeding. It's very difficult, actually, raising did a child. You, did you drink alcohol? No, goodness me. I well, I was going to tell you something. Vicky, Vicky had a first glass of wine the other night. In a minute, we're talking breastfeeding, and and she and honestly, and and it didn't. It, uh, Iris was a bit, a bit like that. So I don't think you should drink alcohol. You're a drunk baby. I think it's, I think. Oh, it's hold fair. on, Alice. We're now onto breastfeeding. Peter, stay out of this. Is it okay, <laughs> Jeremy. Yes, it's, it's absolutely fine. Okay. Like the alcohol in your breast because it's and also, in orange juice. Exactly. <laughs> Alice is right. But also, just to clarify, I was using hyperbole. I was not drinking at six oh. o'clock in the morning. Thank you so much, Peter. <laughs> I don't do to watch it us. was seven in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Peter and Alice uh, for joining us. Let's take another look at some of this morning's front pages now. <laughs> the Times says that Boris Johnson is expected to campaign for the Conservatives in red wall seats in the north of England and the Midlands ahead of the general election. The Telegraph leads with Rishi's pledge to build more gas power stations to avoid any risk of blackouts. Right. And finally, the sun cries, lay off Kate, mm. as the paper issues a warning to social media trolls who bullied the Princess of Wales over her recent Mother's Day photo disaster. Well, staying with that royal story now, as Kensington Palace has refused to release the original portrait taken of the Princess of Wales and her children after Kate announced she had edited the image of her family before release. Now, of course, a big furore yesterday. First official picture uh, since she underwent planned abdominal surgery. 
Piers Morgan jumped on board last night. He's like, we've got to release the original to continue this, you know, to end this speculation. My thought would be that if you go back and continue this, people will pick it to shreds. I don't even understand what it means. So we thought, what better to do than to get a former royal photographer, Ian Pelham Turner. Ian, a very good morning to you. Um, presumably the message from this, if we don't get too deep about trust, is employ a professional. Absolutely. Good morning to both of you. Well, uh, quite honestly, I hope this does go away because I could do with some sleep at the moment. Um, I'm working with the TV <laughs> channels right across the world right now. And uh, you know, at the moment, uh, so many theories uh, are coming out now about these photographs. America seems to be throwing up all sorts of new potential alleged leads. And, and as I say, you know, who knows what's going to happen next with, with this uh, story? Do you think that this is something that's commonplace, actually, Ian, and, and royals have traditionally photoshopped these images and perhaps we haven't questioned it, but because maybe allegedly Kate has done these herself, the, the glaring errors are She's a little bit She's doing it more... again. No. Ian, Poirot here has been looking for things for days. Ian, work with me here. As a professional photographer, if you were editing a photograph, you would not have left glaring Photoshop errors like that? Well, well, I mean, these days I'm a broadcaster rather than a photographer, but, but the thing that I notice with uh, these so-called raw photographs today um, is that there are so many errors. There are so many bits um, that uh, are not really correct in the way of taking formal royal photographs. You know, when I, when I was doing, I worked with five generations of the royal family. Um, I did some of probably the most iconic photographs. I did William's first baby Christmas shots, for example. And, and the reality in those days were you had to be perfect. You know, I mean, the, the, to paraphrase a political saying, photographers today have never had it so good. In my day, for example, when I did probably the most iconic photographs of Prince William uh, as a baby, uh, we were given seven minutes to do it. Uh, we weren't allowed to talk to them, direct them in any way at all. These days, they're given hours, they're given the opportunities to actually uh, use uh, all the techniques to, to change things. The problem with ph photographs in my day, well, you're never quite sure what you'd got until the film was developed. And Nowadays, I, they can I, see straight away. If yeah. I could jump in, listen, you're, a, you're an extra old photographer slash broadcaster, and, and, and I'm, I'm slightly bored of this conversation, but I, not you and me. Not this, this, whole, conversation, not this conversation, Ian, you this, understand. This whole thing, because like you said, it's going on and on. But then I think to myself, and I was thinking about this last night, the royals who have been under siege from a lot of people in this country who think that they're past it, I think are trying or have been trying. You know, we talked about the slim down monarchy here, but also tried to become more relevant. And, you know, these photographs that she's taken of them and the kids and it's all very natural and whatever, I just think it's come back and bitten them. But I personally, I mean, a lot of people in this building and, and, and in the media are saying it ruins the trust. Uh, are we getting to a point where we're putting undue pressure on a woman who's had abdominal surgery and is a mother of three? Just leave her alone. No, I don't think so. Um, the, the thing that I look at and I'm very strong about is that don't forget we pay for the royal family. It's the blood, sweat and tears of the British nation that pays for them to be in the position that they're in as well. Uh, and, um, and so nowadays, the, the reality, uh, I think, it would be far better for Kate not to take any more official raw photographs to be put out for publication. She can take whatever she wants to do privately. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But I think the reality at the moment, what she has done has caused uh, such big issues right across the world. Uh, so many conspiracy uh, theories now are coming out of America, that, uh, which I'm having to field with at the same time. Uh, and we don't need a royal family like this that are really causing all these issues. And Ian, at the end of the day, this was a Mother's Day photo. They traditionally do release one. She could have quite easily released an old photograph. Last year's. Last year's, you know, a, a private photograph of, of the four of them or the five of them together. But the whole point of this image being released in the way that it was, was to dampen the speculation and to reassure people that she was OK. And it has just backfired. backfired massively and I don't think there is much that they could do other than as Piers Morgan has said release the original copy of the photo and I think that perhaps Piers and other people who have suggested that have done so because maybe and this is only speaking for myself here I don't necessarily believe that that original photograph 
does exist does in a matter? form. I don't understand what Pierce is talking about. Or you, what does it matter? Ian, thank you, by the way. Really appreciate it. Final word. Um, does this create a trust issue between Kensington Palace and the press going forward? Absolutely, yes. Brilliant. Very there sure. We go. Good luck in America. And you're brought, you, do, you took a call while we're in the mid interview. Somebody's booking him. He's working all the time. <laughs> Ian Palatino, thank you very much indeed. Thank you so Former much for joining, royal photographer. Oh, he's saluting now. But uh, they, have to, they have to release the original just why? to stop people talking about it. But why? Because that, then that puts paid to people like me, shuts people like me and Piers up, who are saying, you know, oh, I think that maybe that original photograph is a lot different. Two, so let's just let's leaked. just play devil's advocate here. Let's just say she's not been well, she doesn't look her best, and she doesn't want it, so she's put that out there. Well, why do you all want to see the original? Because when was that photo taken? What's it got to do with anybody? But then wow. they've entered the game. They've so they've entered shot... the yeah, game. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you, and people should be. Don't enter off... the game. Don't enter the game and lay off Kate, but absolutely criticise Kensington Palace because they're too still to things. come on Talk Today. Great news. Boris is back. Well, at least on the campaign trail. And we'll introduce you what? It's the cream egg superfan who eats 50 of them in a month. <gasps> Reading person. Former Home Office advisor Claire Pearsall and Times columnist Hugo I Like a Cream Egg Rifkin. Take us through this morning's papers. We're coming right back. This is Talk Today. Good morning. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Where is> this <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't <laughs> too keen on that. I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to it was have another moved on from era. that. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back. You were talking today, 7.27. Uh, we'll have the weather in just a moment, but here is what else is coming up on the programme this morning. Boris Johnson is expected to return to campaigning to help the Conservatives in the next election. We'll discuss that in the papers next. Charlton Fever is upon us. Day one of the most incredible horse racing spectacular will be on Shabana Hearn here to tell us what's going to happen, and I'll give you some winners, guaranteed. 
I don't know if we're legally allowed to do that. And at 9.20, Royal commentator Jenny Bond gives her take on Kate's Photoshop faux pas. Suggestions on winners. There we go. You like a bet, don't you, Naz? Uh, no. No. You like... <laughs> Can you bet on the weather? Yes, you can. You can bet on uh, whether it's going to Hold be on. Hold a white on. Christmas. I don't bet. You. you can bet on the weather. You can. You can bet on whether it's going to be a white Christmas. And <clears throat> technically, yes. you only need to have flake. one snowflake yeah. fall at a <clears throat> weather station for it to be a white Christmas. So you're telling me... So no you... snow lying on the ground. So you've never bet snowflake. on the weather because you see things, you know things. You're like this weather god. So why wouldn't you bet money? It's like insider weather trading. I, I yeah, are you, al are you allowed to bet on the yeah. weather? I don't know. I never tried. We'll find out <laughs> before the next bulletin. Not that we're condoning if you are a weather person that you would like a bet Please on the Cheltenham Festival of the Snow. responsibly. Yes, do. Thank you. Crack uh, on. Right. Where did that Weather come from? Weather today. It is getting milder, but also staying wet. <laughs> Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good morning. First things first, we're away with those easterly winds and now we've got more of a southwesterly flow developing. That means it's turning milder, but it means lots of low pressure systems coming through with their fronts of rain and strong winds. So it stays unsettled for the rest of this week. At times there will be a bit of brightness here and there, uh, possibly so on Saturday it could be quite a sunny day and very mild. Temperatures could reach up to around 17 degrees Celsius. The average for this time of the year is around 11. But back to the here and now. This morning it's a very wet start across England and West this morning some heavy downpours tricky driving conditions just be aware especially heavy downpours across parts of the west whereas across parts of northern ireland central southern scotland some showery rain there but northern scotland mostly fine and bright for the mainland shetland and orkney though seeing some showery rain that will continue through this afternoon mostly fine and bright as i mentioned for northern parts of mainland scotland central and southern areas will be cloudy with patchy outbreaks of rain a bit drier later for northern ireland but staying predominantly cloudy and that rain shifting quickly eastwards towards eastern parts of england later this afternoon but there will also be further rain across the north and west of England and Wales later another batch of wet weather spreading across Ireland and Northern Ireland temperature wise though higher than the last few days due to that southwesterly airflow we're looking at highs of around 13 or 14 degrees Celsius now, that mild airflow continues into tonight. We also continue to see that rain across Ireland and Northern Ireland heading up towards parts of Scotland, perhaps the far north and west of England and Wales, with heavy downpours. Strengthening winds are expected as well. But for the east of Wales and Midlands, central, southern and eastern England, mostly dry, a cloudy night and a very mild one, noticeably mild, in fact, because temperatures won't really drop from the daytime highs. Then tomorrow, a bit of an issue with that front. It clears from Scotland and Northern Ireland, but it sort of lingers. It's so slow moving across northern parts and western parts of England and had Wales and that could bring a lot of rain and some surface water flooding is likely but it does turn brighter and drier for much of Scotland except for some rain to the northwest Northern Ireland fine and bright and most of central and southern parts of England and Wales also fine and bright but the north and west will be cloudy and very wet Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather Cheers, Naz. Let's go through today's papers now with former Home Office advisor Claire Pearsall and Times columnist Hugo Rifkin. Welcome back, both. Yes. Um, we're going to start with, there's just been some breaking news. Breaking news. Andrew and Tristan Tate arrested in Romania. Uh, controversial social media influencer Andrew Tate, right, and his brother Tristan have been arrested in Romania over allegations of sexual aggression. But this is a UK, this is a UK arrest warrant. So they've taken them into custody in Romania again this morning because the UK have asked for them to be extradited back here, presumably to stand trial. So now the United Kingdom's getting on the track. Mm. I know you interviewed him, Hugo. Yes, uh, just before he was arrested the first time, I think yeah. it must have been, uh, about a little over a year ago. Uh, this is, I guess, quite a big deal for yeah. him. I mean, if uh, because there have been various allegations that have swirled around him in Britain. He always boasted very loudly. He boasted to me very loudly when I interviewed him. No one's ever been able to make them stick. There you go. I mean, if it's um, obviously he's got a, going through a, a trial process in Romania, so it would, I'd imagine it would be a while before there was any successful even attempt to extradite him back to Britain because you think the Romanians will want to crack at him first. Interesting. But it does seem yeah. to be the whole the sort of wheels coming off a bit, doesn't well, it? Well, the brothers were detained on charges that date back to between 2012 and 2015. So, yeah, there's obviously not much we can say about it at the moment. Investigations we... pending, no. Absolutely. Well, we do know that the brothers are facing rape and human trafficking charges in Romania 
where they live. And they've been previously in jail um, and later under house arrest since they were detained in December. And I have to say this for a reason, the obviously reason. Andrew and Tristan, they say the allegations are unfounded. There is a court of law. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to do that as broadcasters. Claire, just a, a quick response to that breaking news. Yeah, I mean, I think this is really significant if there's a, an arrest warrant and an extradition request putting in from the United Kingdom. It'd be really interesting to see what evidence the UK has. And we look forward to it going through the court system. Yes, indeed. And I hope that all those young kids who seem to listen to what he says will also listen if things come out that yeah. are proven to Perhaps be like that. think again about making an idol of somebody who... I want to look at Rifkin's face. Boris Johnson is on the comeback. Yes, yes. Times, front page, Bojo expected a campaign from the Conservatives in the red wall seats, despite the fact that Sunak said he would, you know, Sunak begging him now, man, begging well, him. This is just great news for everyone. Uh, Boris Johnson is coming back. Sell it. He, he and Rishi Sunak, they've made peace, they've buried the hatchet. Best yes. uh, uh, Rishi has decided that the way, the best, his best chance of doing well in the forthcoming election is to bring back the guy who was so embarrassing they had to get rid of him after a year of trying to. Uh, I, they're not going to be appearing on stages together, but apparently they are going to be sort of canvassing and campaigning so together. Let's... Whatever. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> you know it's like... It's, I don't think it's going to make that much difference at this stage. I also don't think uh, necessarily the... But it's the sort of, it's like the parable about the frog and the scorpion or whatever. I'm not sure you can necessarily trust Boris Johnson for a long time if you're Rishi Sunak. The idea that this means that there's going to be no more attacks on Sunak by Johnson supporters seems a pretty slim chance works, to me. Works in Bojo's favour, though, doesn't it, Claire? Well, of course it he does. Gets him out around the country, gives him something <laughs> meaningful to do with his life. Um, it, when you speak to some of the Tory MPs who are great Boris uh, fans, friends, supporters, they say that he hasn't spoken to Rishi. They're not mates at all, and this is all a lie. So somewhere somebody's not quite telling the truth. Would it be beneficial for Boris if, as the polls predict, the Tories are facing electoral wipeout? Great word. Why would he... <laughs> thank you. Why would he want to associate himself with that if he has any further ambition beyond the next general well, election? Because he wants to show some loyalty. He yeah. doesn't want to be blamed for the disaster. Also, look, I mean, it's not coincidence, I'm sure, that from wherever this has come from, it's come, from, come on the same... Just after Lee Anderson's gone to reform, right? They want to show... They want to show that actually there is some uh, some legacy. They want to show some sort of inroads into that kind of sort of you know semi mythical red wall mindset. It works for Johnson on so many levels. Well, though. it does. I mean, he he wants to be the messiah who comes back and saves the party again, and that's the way he views himself. Um, but Can he, they be saved? Uh, well, no. Is it's it not easier for him if he if he has got? Well, this is it, isn't it? It's whether or not he wants to come back into frontline British politics, isn't it better for him to stay away from this election no, to turn he... around and say, you had a disaster without me? Hugo's no. right. No. I think there needs to be a little bit of mea culpa. I'm sort of responsible for this, uh, to a degree. Uh, I didn't agree with you changing, by the way, to this man, because it's now worse off. I'm going to come back into the campaign. Mm. I'm going to go to those Red Bull seats, see if I can... God, we might win a few seats and I can say I did something. They'll go rid of But he didn't even show up for his constituents. He's, he's not actually mm. going to do anything. Yeah. No. You know, he's just let it be said he's that He's managed it again, though. You We're know. talking about him. Let's crack yeah. on. Claire, I don't understand this. In the eye, the British individual savings account is set to be delayed past the general election. What does that mean? So this was the uh, new British ISA tax-free savings account that was announced by Jeremy Hunt in the budget only last week. So to, it's already gone. Yeah, and he mentioned it last week. He did, and this would be an extra £5,000 on top of your £20,000 tax-free savings that you can have, but it must be invested in uh, UK companies on the stock market. Now, the Treasury have looked at this and said, actually, it's too expensive, you're not going to have the, the headroom that you should have according to your own fiscal rules, so they've had to can it. Well, they've put it out to consultation, which we all know what that means. Apparently, there is a three-month consultation period which takes you over the new tax year, so the earliest that you can introduce it is early 2025. Is it me, Hugo? But, but, but we sit here and we do this show, right? And papers write stories. How incompetent, how utterly, mm -hmm. ridiculously incompetent are these politicians? The Chancellor has just announced a three-month consultation to something that seven days ago he said was a policy. What is wrong with these people before I self-combust? <laughs> are they thick? I'm being serious, man. No wonder people are just bored of politics with people this incompetent. What does that mean? Well, it means that the priority isn't doing stuff, the priority is saying stuff. So when he gets up, when he gets up to, to, to do a budget and to announce what's in the budget, he's not thinking... 
And, the, and it's, this isn't just him. This is always the way with budgets. He's not thinking, how do I improve Britain for the better? He's thinking, how do I sound like I want to improve Britain for the better? Which is a very different question. That's what he did. That's why they always... Budgets always fall apart in the yeah. days after the budget. Because they're always not properly costed. They're always not properly checked. Wow. Uh, you know, it's yeah. all about the announcement. I'm going to be, if I policy. continue wow. doing this job, I'm going to end up becoming more cynical than I was before I started. <laughs> if that was <laughs> even possible. I well, see, I fed her that, Poirot. She bit it up. Speaking of saying one thing and meaning another, we'll move on now to a story in The Times about electric cars, which apparently travel significantly less than what they say they can. Yes, what? this is the front page of The Times again, really. It's, it's the only paper you need. Um, it's... Um, <laughs> Uh, basically, a, a witch car magazine. They've conducted a, a bunch of bunch of tests on um, on, uh, on 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 electric cars and what their range is. The range is never what it claims to be. This isn't terribly surprising. The same sort of true of petrol cars, albeit to a lesser degree. But generally speaking, they test electric cars in warm, nice environments where the cars are happy, and then you take them out on the road. And are you an electric car? I was trying to say earlier, and I yeah. said he was frozen. So Craig Phillips, who won Big Brother in 1735, was on the show yesterday, <laughs> and um, and he was he, his family were in the back, and he had a, a, a one of these electric cars, and he was heading towards these traffic lights. Why are we showing his bicep? And uh, he was heading towards the the and and er, the brakes didn't work. And at that moment, when we were expecting him to wow. tell the this terrible thing, uh... his Zoom froze. So we don't actually know what happened. But we seem to be hearing more and more. Are you an electric car fan? No, no, oh. I like a petrol car. I like proper driving. Oh. I really, really do. Um, and also, I live in a part of the country with no infrastructure whatsoever, nowhere to charge up, and nowhere within about eight miles of a public... That's the thing, place. isn't it? I, look, I don't drive with my partner. When we go to visit my parents, we try and do, you know, the good thing and does get an electric drive? vehicle. Yes, he does. Um, and we will get only so far Ridiculous. and then find ourselves, because we've been listening to the radio and got the heating on, Yeah, mm. it's not gone nearly as far as yeah. we hoped that it would. <laughs> and I found this with several Uber drivers that I've used around London. Where did the when, heating come from? Because it uses the battery. So a lot of Uber drivers or Bolt drivers around the centre of London won't have the heating on in the middle of winter because yeah. they're like, well, I don't yeah. know where I'm going to get charged and that, next. And that's, so why, like this in the back yeah. of the that, car. that's why the London mayor's upset so many London cabbies because now they have to get electric cabs, which they cannot afford, and they spend... And I've spoken mm. to so many of them, they have to wait for four hours whilst it charges up to but go 40 miles. Not, that's not good enough. We're not all long-distance drive, distance drivers. We're not all cabbies. I have a slightly electric car. It's of course, you're right I, between I, the two. Yeah. Aren't you? I, I, absolutely, I, I'd love yeah. it to be more electric, but I've got nowhere to plug it in. But really, for the vast bulk of people who live in cities, uh, we ought to have the sort of cars and the sort of infrastructure where we can drive during the day and plug in our car at night. There's, the, I mean, the, mm -hmm. of course. What about the people that aren't in London? The people that mm. live. Well, all they already have country? it. Then they, then they can have proper cars. They already have it. Fine by me. And there are government. Oh, you're now Thank deciding you. that the big cities should no. have electric cars. Uh, there well, are yes, government schemes 100%. that can yeah. help people to install electric chargers. So it's actually a lot easier, I think, if you're outside yeah. of, of big city centres to be able to do it. But ultimately, this is teething problems, isn't it? It's a, a relatively new technology. It's going to take some time for it to be properly usable? No, or do you think no, we're going to go straight I, back I to I think petrol? that we are so far behind when right, it comes okay. to infrastructure and the fact that they're heavier cars. We're already seeing the roads More that are holes. broken up already. And you've got heavier cars on there. There's been fires reported at airport car parks. And they reverse themselves. They do. They're, I they're... don't trust anyone else to drive my car other than me. What about your husband? Definitely not. Excellent. There we go. I'm going to do what they call Fine. a segue into the next story, just really what, sorry, quickly. You're going to do a, what? a segue what does into that mean? A, this next story. From a which car is... and her husband, what are you doing? Pothole story, Jeremy. Very good. Uh, a 101 yes. year old woman has been told to fill in potholes after locals complained about their road. But that's illegal, isn't it? Ah, uh, I mean, the, the devil's in the detail with this one. It, it is a sad indictment of the way we live, but it is a private road. So the council right. doesn't own it. However, it is a public right of way. So there is a public footpath. So the council is saying one thing, saying, no, tough luck, you have to go and fill it yourself. The road in Somerset is uh, mainly lived in by. Older people. Watch it. Have you been to watch it? It's an interesting place. It's, it's an interesting... I have been there, actually, mm. and it is a very it's interesting place. Where I went. <laughs> Most of the time. Mm. Um, but I think the council really do need to have a look and see if there is anything they can do. I understand that it is a private road. I completely get that. But if you are going I to send ambulances down there or police down there or fire engines, you're, you're, they're going to come a cropper too. Your you're, 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 you're fan is quite interesting, actually, because we, they, they did some research some time ago. Um, do you know, for millions of people in this country. We can talk about Johnson and Sunak and immigration. And we could, uh, on, on the radio and on the television, 
potholes are a massive I'm thing to people. A massive do remember, issue. Do you remember last year when Rod Stewart was outside yes. his house yes. filling in potholes? Yeah, I mean, we've got around the corner from our house, there's a pothole the size of a swimming pool that's been there for six months. Someone did fill it in. Like, right. obviously, obviously someone, somebody lives there, just poured in some gravel. Yeah. It's, worn, it's worn away again. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, the council, okay, so the council's telling this old... Uh, this, this old lady, they're not going to fix a pothole. They're not fixing ours either. No. It's not a private road. He doesn't care road. about you, Sheila. Hugo <laughs> Rifkin. Now, we have to finish with this. We do. Because indeed. we got... Yeah, look, because I, I, I've wanted to see her do this all my life. <laughs> a cream egg super van... I don't eat them. Uh, eats 50 cream eggs, right, a month, claiming no amount is ever enough. But I have next to me Poirot, who said, and I quote, right... 50 is not a lot. Not we need to know. How do you eat it? One what? and a half a day? I don't think that's that's not how many. How do you eat it? Every, every day? Every, every day. day. Yeah, I mean, show there me, was a, so there was a lad at our it. school who once ate 13 in a row oh, in our oof. sixth form common room. No, no. How do we? How do I eat mine? I'm not going to do it on television. Yeah, go on. And because uh, it'll live forever, I'm going to do it like that. Mm. You eat the top bit. Right. Then you've got the, and then yeah. you lick it in the middle. I'm not doing it on breakfast Sunday, Jeremy. That's, okay. that's, that's, a normal, that's a normal way to eat I think that's a normal what way else, to do What other way is there so, to eat them? I mean, I don't know. I guess you could know. stick it all in and chew or something. With a spoon. With a spoon. You could freeze it and then slice it. And but the super fan has said no amount is ever enough. Well, apparently 50 a month is probably where they're... Um, so, they're bad for you. So, I don't, I'm not saying this is a conspiracy to match the, you know, sort of photo of Kate and what have you. <laughs> Are they connected? She eats 50 a month. She's eaten 100 this year. It's March the 12th. Yeah. Even though it was a leap year, I don't think those numbers work. No. Yeah. Hip. I think she's merely eating... Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, Maybe just... we've got to it. Maybe the Princess of Wales has a Cadbury's <laughs> cream egg <laughs> obsession and has eaten so many that her face has blown up with some sort of infection and that's why she can't come out. 50 a month is too many. It is too many. I would say. I'm what's your favourite chocolate? What, what, what's your go-to chocolate? Dairy milk. Mm. Or a Yorkie. Got to, be, got to be kept in the fridge, though. A Yorkie? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah then my plastic rich. teeth break. I did that once. I've been <laughs> to a Yorkie. And... Do you remember when Yorkies were not for girls? Yes. Yes. Yeah, no one was offended. Were Even they? a yeah. chocolate bar, we've got to get in on it. They were for lorry drivers. You had your, your big truck and your Yorkie bar never, and your four and foot. Never seen a girl eat a Yorkie, to be fair. There we go. Hugo Rifkin has never seen a girl eat a Yorkie. Do you want me to get you a Yorkie for the next hour? I'm not a girl. What sort of. <laughs> you can feed it to Claire. What, what Yorkie? A normal Yorkie or a biscuit Yorkie? I'm it's like seven o'clock in the morning. I'm not eating chocolates. Okay. Of yeah. course, other uh, chocolate bars are available for men and women. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Thank you so much to Claire and Hugo. They'll be back with more papers in just under an hour. Uh, listen, we're going to. Uh, you've been getting in touch with all your views. We'll read some very quickly. Actually, thank you for them. Uh, talk today at talk.tv. Text to eight seven triple two. Tory MP Lee Anderson defected yesterday to reform. Uh, got very punchy at his uh, at his press conference. Thirty uh, P Lee has become three party. Lee North says. Oh. Kardashian, isn't it? Any Tory MP that wishes to switch should be thoroughly vetted and their voting history should be vigorously scrutinised. We must not permit a particular view and learnings to cross over into the Reform Party. But Casey said, we need new people, not the old bunch. It's time we put an end to career politicians. Hugo, not you. Have you been texting whilst you're working? <laughs> Most of the current MPs are incompetent. They're more concerned about towing the line and bettering their own nest, feathering the nest. Mr 30p Lee is our perfect example. And Saren says, Reform doesn't need to look back if Braverman and Farage join the cause too. Sean very quickly need more people like Lee Anderson who isn't afraid to speak up and tell it how it is. And Tom says, I'm happy with the decision. Talk today at talk.tv, text to 87 treble 2. I'm looking forward to the next segment because I'm going to grill her because I know more about horse racing than Shabana her knows about football. Well, thank you. I look forward to that. I hope I am prepared. Chelsea managed to bag a win against Newcastle last night. An amateur jockey believed to be the tallest in the world is competing in the first race of the Cheltenham Festival. Woohoo! It's today and Brazilian football legend Ronaldo is playing Sunday League football in Essex. Sounds mad, but it's true. Well, sort of. I'll tell you about it all very, very soon. This is Talk Today. Good morning. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Oi, oi, treacle.
when JK Rowling says, let's just be honest. That's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. I might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, listen. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put the statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to Talk Today. It is 10 to 8, and it's a good day if you're a Chelsea fan after they managed to score a 3-2 win at home against Newcastle last night. Well, joining us now to run through that and all top sporting stories is Talk Sport presenter Shaban Ahern. Good morning, good Shaban. Good morning. I'm going to let you into a little secret. Jeremy was supposed to read that, but I think he was so busy placing a bet at the time. And <laughs> munching a to... cream egg. <laughs> no, no, I haven't munched on any egg. She had a whole one. I oh, did Poirot How here. do you eat yours? <laughs> How do you eat yours? How do you eat yours? How do you eat yours? <laughs> Japan, Chelsea, they steal it from Newcastle with a 3-2 victory. Yeah, do you know what? A very good performance also last night from Chelsea at Stamford Bridge because we know that's a hard place for them to go at the minute. Way, hey. but um, a, a decent wow. three points. It takes them um, just behind Newcastle on the table. There's a chance that they could get European football. A good performance. Cole Palmer still on the show, but also Mikhailo Mudrik finding the back of the net and what was a good performance from him. The money spent on some of these players we've been questioning for quite some time. But Mudrik looked worth a penny or two last night. Maurizio Pochettino also before the game had come out and said, if the players aren't happy with me, perhaps they should go speak to the chair which I thought was quite, oh, some, um, some weird comments Won't be there next me. season. Won't be there. Uh, Ian of, Ten Hag won't be there. I, I kind of agree with you on that. And by the way, I want to run something past you in just a second, but Chelsea fans, a lot of Chelsea fans want Josie Mourinho back at the club. With John Terry is his assistant. I mean... That would be, that'd be the thing. see it. I mean, to come back again... If you were Bowley and you were trying to win over that Stamford Bridge faithful and Vic's family, they're all mad Chelsea fans, season ticket holders. They want Mourinho and John Terry. That's what they want. They want, they want Pochettino gone. Um, 
Let's do the Champions League because we need to talk horse racing. Come on, it's a big day. <laughs> yeah, Champions League tonight. Uh, Arsenal against Porto. It's, of course, the second leg of the last 16. They're uh, trailing 1-0 from that first leg. But home at the Emirates tonight it is the 12th man all the way for the guys in this competition. Trying to break a 14-year jinx of being out of the Champions League in the last 16. So it's a big game for the Gunners tonight. Bearing in mind, credit to them. They're top of the league at the minute, looking to get the last 16. Perhaps... Arsenal will win a competition this season. I mean, are they getting that winning mentality, do you think? I don't know. Not sure. Uh, listen, they know. could do it. They could do it. I don't know. They look great. But I still think they're a little bit flaky. But I think after that draw between Liverpool and uh, Man City, I think anything's possible, to oh, be perfectly what, honest. What a title race. It is, yeah. I'm living for this title race <laughs> and we're nowhere near it. Such a, what an amazing woman. I'm living for this title. I mean, absolute perfect I just, wife, I just you? don't get out much. No, you don't. <laughs> right, Cheltenham today. Right, Talk that's... Sport, our sister station. The only way, the best way to listen to all the action. Um, we're going to be live at Alan, Alan's uh, breakfast show, of course, coming live yeah. with Corals from Cheltenham. The Cheltenham Festival uh, is the mecca of national hunt racing. And um, there's a big story developing this morning. Willie Mullins, champion Irish trainer, a man who sends battalions of horses over, sometimes four or five. Uh, interesting uh, headline in the Sun today. Mullins has the layers in panic mode with his team of stars. He has four favourites running in the first four, what, four of the first five races today. Um, and they are literally panicking the bookmakers because this could I don't know if you know this but years ago it happened and Annie Power jumped the last was the four of four and fell Ruby Welsh fell off it oh. saved the bookies millions and millions oh, of pounds. Wow. but they are re very very worried today um uh, four horses um do you want me to name them yeah please I mean Tully please, Hill in the first okay Tully Hill. Gaelic warrior in the second oh, state like man in the champion hurdle and lossy mouth in the mayor's final Tully Hill Gaelic warrior we're not condoning gambling at all Absolutely state man not. And lost him out. But it is a big, big day for the Irish. The Irish descend on Cheltenham like it's just, I don't know, it's almost a religious thing for the, for the Irish. It is. It? I mean, it's, it's Christmas to, yeah. to horse lovers and to mm. racing lovers. So this is a huge event. The first race gets underway at half past one today and the final race set to begin at half past five. Of course, it all builds up to the Gold Cup on Friday, which is the race. I got to go to it last year. It was absolutely excellent. And tomorrow I head up the first thing in the morning until Friday. God save my soul. Do you love it? I'm nervous. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. Nervous about what? I don't know. It's just the whole Cheltenham thing and Alan it's... Brazil's Cheltenham. I'm oh. like, oh. It's an amazing spectacle. You'll have a great time. Uh, listen, Talk Sport, our sister station, is yeah, there. there. And uh, listen, we always say, if you are going to have a bet, gamble responsibly. But at the end of the day, it's going to be an amazing spectacle. What did we say yesterday? 300,000 pints of Guinness? Yes. I believe so, yes, yeah. Yes, over it's the such week. a big event. Of course, it always reminds me of Cheltenham. No, I don't like horse racing. Um, is it the, the whipping? Yeah, it's yeah, just it's like that. an animal thing. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, it's, it's, not, it's not my thing. But um, I understand that people really love it. But what I want to talk about is this story about the world's two tallest mm. jockeys are going yes. to be racing today. Yes, this is so unusual because actually when you go to Cheltenham, when you go to the horse race and the jockeys are petite men. They're, they're yeah. petite men and women, of course. We um, little men. We, we, we. Is that why you like going to the races? Oi! No, no, Listen, because you feel... You know what I'm going to sort out this week like for both of you, don't you? What? A couple of whips, let me tell you. That's <laughs> happening. Crack on. Crack on! Crack on! Crack on. Yes! Very good. You can take the rest of the day off. Thomas <laughs> Costello you will. Uh, yes. will be an outsider on Asian Mustard today in the Supreme Novices Hurdle. But two jockeys taking place today, taking part, sorry, today in Cheltenham. Look six that foot picture. four. Yeah. That's just so unusual. Six for four, jockeys. six two. Jockeys are, are petite little people, but that's an extraordinary They're usually story averaging in the at around five two. So look out. Well, you can't miss them today um, taking part in Cheltenham. Thomas Costello. And um, if you are, the young man's blown my mind. Jack Andrews. Please, though, give a listen to TalkSport if you, if you aren't by television. An amazing breakfast show with Adam Brazil, live from Cheltenham all yeah. this week. Fantastic. Gamble response. They have a great time. Shaban, thank you very much indeed. Thank you so a much horse for joining us on the this way. morning. Yeah. Still to come on Talk today as Lee Anderson defects to Reform UK. The chairman of his constituency's Conservative Federation says a vote for reform will only deliver a Labour government. That's next on Talk Today. It is 7.56. Good morning. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Oi, oi, treat girl. 
When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest. It's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> that, that oh, a, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. This is Talk Today with Jeremy Kyle and Nicola Thorpe. Hey, very good morning to you. Just gone 8 o'clock. You are with us on Tuesday the 12th of March. That's right. You were taught today on TV, radio, online and on your smart speaker. Here are your top stories this morning. Body blow. 30p Lee becomes three-party Lee. See what we did there as he defects to reform? Big question this morning. Can the PM survive losing yet another MP? Back to Boris. The former leader is set to hit the campaign trail in a desperate attempt to win back red wall voters. And a royal apology. The Princess of Wales says she's sorry for editing her Mother's Day photograph but fails to silence speculation online led by Piers Morgan and Nicola Thorpe. And no more cold easterly winds, so warmer weather, but wetter as well. I have the details in the forecast a little later. Cheers, Naz. Now it's time for the headlines with Emily. Thank you, Nicola. Good morning. Reports this morning suggest that the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak could call a snap general election if 10 Conservative MPs defect to Reform UK. It comes after Lee Anderson said he's been given the chance to speak out for millions of people up and down the country after defecting from the Conservative Party amid an Islamophobia row. The MP says he should be able to speak his mind. Controversial social media influencer Andrew Tate and his brother have been arrested in Romania over allegations of sexual aggression. The charges date back to 2012 to 2015, with the brothers denying the allegations. They were handed a European arrest warrant by UK authorities and an investigation is now pending. They're already facing rape and human trafficking charges in Romania where they live.
Prince William has pressed ahead with his public duties despite the controversial photo editing row that surrounds his wife. The Prince of Wales attended an event bringing together Earthshot Prize winners last night after Kate was forced to apologise for any confusion over a family photograph that was issued by Kensington Palace, which she later admitted editing. A royal journalist, Pandora Forsyth, has told Talk Today her response has only added more fuel to the fire. Nothing she says is, is going to go down well, whether it's good um, or bad in, in people's opinion, because they want to see her back at work, but she needs time to rest. I mean, it was lighthearted slightly. We've all been there. We've all edited a photo. The issue is, uh, in this circumstance, is there was a rumour mill online and conspiracy theories. The rate of UK unemployment rose to 3.9% in the three months to January. That's up from 3.8% in the previous quarter. Meanwhile, figures from the Office for National Statistics also show wage growth has slightly eased back to 6.1% in the three months to January. And we're being warned to expect bananas to become more expensive due to climate change. A meeting is being held in Rome later on to discuss the challenges facing the fruit as top experts suggest rising temperatures pose an enormous threat to supplies across the world. I'll have more headlines in an hour. Cheers, Emily. Why are you so angry about bananas? I always remember my son used to have bananas in pyjamas. Do you remember that programme? They're coming down the stairs. Apparently, they'll use any excuse to bring climate change. Bananas are going to be more expensive because it's too hot. What does that mean? Well, Where because... do bananas grow in the hottest countries in the world? Yes, but there's obviously going to be climate issues that mean there aren't going to be as many anymore. I'm though. going to do a segue from bananas to Lee Anderson. How'd you do? Uh, Lee Anderson yesterday, obviously defecting to a reform. All of you having your say. We asked you, do you think the more Tory MPs could follow suit? They're saying that if 10 do, uh, Dishy Rishi will call an election. Jack, the most crucial thing that reform is failing to acknowledge is that their party rose in popularity because of the Tories' mess. The question they need to address in order to get into power is... Does the public want Tory MPs in the name of reform? Most of the voters like me who are moving away from a two-party system don't want to see it. It's a very, very good point there, Jack. Uh, Cooper says, with the current leadership among the Conservatives, securing a win in the general election is unlikely. I want more of the Tories, and especially Suella, to join the game with Reform UK. Whereas Rose... Indeed. Yeah, well, with Rose says, it's time we, the voters, tell Reform UK that they can lose our votes if they keep taking on members from other failed political parties. Talk today at talk.tv, text to 8722. So it is the top story. Um, Rishi is under pressure today. Lee Anderson, a man who has gone from Labour to Conservative uh, to Reform, uh, MP for Ashfield. He was suspended for Islamophobic remarks against Sadiq Khan. He becomes Reform's first sitting MP ever. And as Jeremy said, it is his third party in, was it six years? Yeah, 30p to three party, Lee. Well, speaking yesterday, he explained his decision. Like millions of people in this country, I feel that we are slowly giving our country away. We are allowing people into our country that will never integrate and adopt our British values. Parliament doesn't seem to understand what many British people want. It is no secret that I've been talking to my friends in Reform for a while, and Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. And like millions of people up and down the country, all I want is my country back. Five past eight, we're now joined by political commentator Benedict Spence. Uh, Benedict, um, first Tory MP to, to defect to Reform, mm. despite in January calling Richard Tice a pound shop Nigel Farage, despite mm. voting for anybody who crosses the chamber should hold a by-election, he's not holding one, mm -hmm. got very stroppy yesterday at the press conference. Thoughts on the whole process, please, pal? Uh, I'm not sure if it's bananas, but it's a bit nuts. That's what I said. <laughs> hey, yeah. I won't quit my day job. It's, I mean, this is all about Lee Anderson, ultimately. This is Lee Anderson. I, I don't think for a second that he's sort of fully invested in the idea of the Reform Party as the great insurgent force that's going to sort of unseat the Tory party. What Lee Anderson cares about is retaining his seat. And I think, actually, that this does give him the best chance of doing so. I think, you know, broadly speaking, the Conservatives are very unpopular in a lot of Red Bull seats. I don't think that the Labour Party is as popular as perhaps it would like to be in these former heartlands. And I think being able to stand, rather than stand as an independent uh, and the many difficulties that come with that, having the backing of a party machine behind you, being able to set yourself up saying, well, I'm not Labour, we're not going back to that, but I'm also insurgent against the Tories. They didn't like what I had to say. They got rid of me because they're the Westminster, you know, elite, this and the other, but I'm here to fight for you. I can see how 
probably he was facing losing his seat at the next general election. This, I suspect, gives him a fighting chance of sneaking back in by driving a wedge between the two parties. Because, let's be clear, there's not a lot of love for either of them right mm. now. So I can see why, for Lee Anderson, this would make a lot of sense. From what I understand, actually, it wasn't sort of a, a cut-and-dried thing that he was going to join Reform, because Reform, a lot of people within Reform were not entirely sure, because of his comments about Richard Tice in the past, whether or not this was actually a good idea to bring in somebody who's been kicked out of the Tory party. Does that give the wrong impression? Then but here we are. Suspended by the Labour Party. So the, exactly. the assumption is he only leaves if he doesn't if he doesn't get on. But we also talk, mm. sorry, Nick, about you know Richie Sunak's judgment. I mean, the, 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 this is a man, he made him deputy party chairman. I mean, yeah. the, yet again, a, an appalling example of Sunak. What, out of his debt? He again. knew what Lee, Lee yeah, Anderson absolutely. was. Yeah. He's fired him for those, for not for the comments that he made, crucially, no. but for not having apologised for them. Should Rishi have come down stronger on Lee Anderson? I mean, I think well, he's come down as, as strongly as he can, I think, and he's sort of taking the Starmer playbook of giving somebody an opportunity to apologise and say it was misconstrued, I misspoke or fair I made enough. a mistake, which I think is fair enough, and then he's got rid of him. Um, you couldn't therefore say that he is necessarily the greatest loss of the Tory party is prepared to kick him out or suspend him. You can't say that they were desperate to keep a hold of him. Um, but as to a question of judgment, this isn't this isn't uh, Rishi Sunak's party, really. This is Boris Johnson's party, and he's sort of struggling to keep this coalition um, of, of MPs together, and he's finding it very difficult. And we know, actually, that Rishi Sunak does not have uh, the same appeal to some of these seats, these mm -hmm. rebel seats, that Boris Johnson had, whether or not he still has it is another question, but he certainly had that and was able to bring them together. But they're a very different bunch, actually, to sort of, you know, your, your, your Tory shires to the manor born kind of MPs who represent very different kind of constituencies and who might have found the comments that Lee Anderson made uh, rather beyond the pale, not because they necessarily disagree and think that Sadiq Khan is doing a wonderful job, but they think that the manner in which he went around yeah. it was not acceptable. And, of course, in that clip there, we just saw Lee Anderson say that I've joined Reform because I want to have a voice and I want to speak for the millions mm. of other people who agree with me. Now, of course, he did have a voice in the Tory party. He was a deputy chairman, except yeah. for the fact that he got thrown out of the party for refusing to apologise for a very mm. specific comment, which mm. was a conspiracy theory uh, steeped in Islamophobia about Sadiq Khan. So mm. what is he saying about the Reform Party then? I... Is that here, within the yeah. Reform Party, I have a voice and I can use it to be Islamophobic, just like, as he would say, well, saying, millions he's of not, other he's people. He's not saying he can be Islamophobic. He should have apologised for this. But what comments. he did I... was Islamophobic it, it, and he refused to apologise for But it. I'm really interested as yeah. well. We talked about this earlier. When he says, I want my country back, people will mm. jump on that and go, what? Is he being Islamophobic again, or is he talking about the fact that most of the things that we took for granted but for years... Is, like but a, you're listening, you've got to listen to my point, what Jeremy, does which it is want? he said he has a voice within reform. He did have a voice yep. already in the Tory yeah. party. The only thing he cannot speak about in the Tory party is Islamophobia. So is mm. he saying, I can do that, and I can make comments like that, and I can say things like, I want my country back, and mean things of an Islamophobic nature. I think Lee Anderson recognises that he did misspeak, but mm. he felt that he couldn't back down. I think what actually... And I think that there is a lot more sympathy if you were to put it this way, which is that there is a broad perception that the Metropolitan Police has not handled these pro-Palestine marches particularly well, and that ultimately does fall at the feet of the Mayor of London. I don't think it's in any way fair to make, you know, what the link that he was making. I think it was very crass. But I think what Lee Anderson would probably say in private is there are legitimate criticisms of how Sadiq Khan has actually handled all of this. He can't actually apologise on that, though, because then people will assume that he's being weak and he won't be able to portray this idea of a straight-talking man who just shoots from the hip and speaks how he feels, because that's his kind of appeal, ultimately. As to whether or not that reflects very well on reform, I suspect that the Reform Party would probably take the line that I've taken, which is to say that there are major criticisms to be made of the Metropolitan Police and the Mayor of London, but that they would certainly stop short at that, and that actually he said these things whilst he was a member of the Conservative Party and we've moved on. But at the same time, they're going to be targeting seats it's, where that sort of straight shooting, it, even if you it, misspeak, is not considered the worst no, crime in the but world. But it, it, it is a marriage. It, it's, a, it's an unlikely alliance. Uh, Richard Tice coming out, quite mm. rightly, against Islamophobia and him saying Richard Tice is a pound shop, Nigel Farage. Can yes. we... But he still took him into the party and has yeah. asked him I to apologise. I would apologize. say, I think it's going to make for a very interesting internal politics, actually, the clash of the two personalities between Lee Anderson and Richard Tice, because Anderson is not so... He's not shy and retiring, and, I'm not being rude. and he's ambitious. Is, is Anderson going to take rules from Richard Tice? And bear in mind that the, the elephant in the room is Nigel Farage. You would blow them both out of the water if he chose to, to, to get back involved actively, right? Which is what I suspect will happen, and is probably why Richard Tice is prepared to allow Lee Anderson, because he doesn't 
anticipate being the figurehead going into the next general election. Let's do a segue. Sure. Boris Johnson, we were just touching over. You said it wasn't, <laughs> it's not Sunak's party, it's Boris Johnson's. Now, stay with me on this, please. Mm. Um, apparently, although people are denying this, relations between him and Sunak have thawed, their respective camps are saying, and Boris is to be sent out. Uh, to campaign in the Red Wall seats, the very area that got him an 80-seat majority three years ago before the Tory party threw him out. Um, that's extraordinary if it's true, isn't it? It's it's very amusing. Um, I suppose the question... We have to remember part of the reason that Richard Junak is in the problems that he is is because Boris Johnson no. managed to lose quite a large lead. No. And I suppose the question that is now... Has the unpopularity of Rishi Sunak plumbed depths to which Boris Johnson is not capable and therefore bringing him back will actually drag him back up? He is less popular than Liz Truss, Benedict, with respect. He's had a lot more time than Liz Truss but to get that unpopular. Boris, give her the amount, I know, of, but give her respect, the amount of time. His judgment isn't great. <laughs> but I you know, talk no, about no, this 80-seat sure. majority, and yeah. I understand that. However, mm. as Benedict has pointed out, he also lost an 80-seat majority. I don't know if that is unprecedented it's, it's, for other Tory leaders, but it was certainly he'd an incredible yeah, thing. He'd lost a lot of support on the back of Partygate. We, we're not going to get into no, whether no, or not that's no. fair, but he had certainly you know, set fire to a lot of his hard-earned support. But are people now looking at Sunak and, as you point out, Liz Truss, and perhaps getting you know, slightly buyer's remorse and saying, actually, we wish that we still had Johnson? I no, think people are fed up, right? I think they yeah. will accept flawed characters. I think they are fed up with hearing Richie mm. Sunak say, I'm a victim of circumstance because of the pandemic, because of Partygate or whatever. He is less popular than the worst part Prime Minister in Liz Truss that we've ever had. I'm not sticking up for Boris Johnson, no. but it says nothing about Sunak that he's gone cap in hand again. But this story says that Johnson is going to be wheeled out specifically in those red yep. or seats. That area that, as I just said about Lee Anderson, actually, the Tories are not popular but Labour are not exactly battering down people's doors. Yeah. So perhaps they look at that, that potential and they say, well, again, there is the possibility to still perhaps nick one or two of these uh, or perhaps, you know, uh, sort of get it into a territory where Labour aren't winning uh, at all. Maybe even taking votes away from Labour if we see, for example, another similarity to the George Galloway situation, the Workers' Party of Britain coming in and taking more votes. I think a lot of those seats are actually more in play than we've been led to assume up to now. And I think actually the Labour Party understand that because they are very cautious about putting forward any kind of policy that could prove divisive amongst their own base. Even at this stage, where they're assumed to just be on the coronation trail, they're actually not putting out a great deal of policy. And that tells me they're not actually as confident as perhaps the rest of us are that they're going to be in power. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Thank you so much to Benedict Spence for that expert analysis. Thanks, uh, mate. Let's take another look at some of this morning's front pages now. The Times says Boris Johnson is expected to campaign for the Conservatives in red wall seats in the north of England and the Midlands ahead of the general election. The Telegraph leads with Richard Sinek's pledge, this is another pledge, to build more gas power stations to avoid any risks of blackout. It just has to find the gas to fill it. And I would um, say the blackout will probably be... Well, never mind, let's crack on. You're blowing enough hot air today, Jeremy. Wow. Finally, the sun cries, lay off cake. And it's aimed at you, Poirot. Well, as the paper issues a warning to social media trolls who bullied the Princess of Wales over her recent Mother's Day photo disaster. Staying with that royal story now, as Kensington Palace has refused to release the original portrait taken of the Princess of Wales as her children, Piers Morgan was saying it should be brought out. She announced earlier yesterday, didn't she, I edited the family image, I do photoshopping, it's my fault, but people will not let this go. Piers Morgan last night saying, you've got to release the original photograph so we all know. Well, it was the first official picture release of the princess since she went underwent sorry, planned abdominal surgery back in January. Raw bark for Tom Bow joins us now. Tom, very good morning to you. Um, help me out, because I'm, I'm getting a bit hacked off with this, excuse the pun. Uh, Nicola and, and Piers are on a mission. They're right, absolutely. Um, so we have a situation where she, she obviously goes to have an operation. The palace say, and I quote, we won't be hearing or seeing any of her till, till after Easter. Everybody's fine with that. Suddenly this photo comes out on Mother's Day, apparently put out, because there's lots of conspiracy theorists online. It's a complete no-no. It's photoshopped to hell. Agencies pull it, and now the conspiracy theorists are emboldened and the words are even stronger. Give us your view, please, TB. <laughs> well, it's most unfortunate. I think that uh, she's very ill. She has had a very serious operation and the palace handled it appallingly. When they said they wouldn't hear from her until after Easter, they should have said quite firmly that, uh, and regularly said, we're not telling you any more. But unfortunately, she bowed to the pressure of all these social media ghouls and troublemakers and speculators who made her life very difficult. And instead of being protected by the palace and her husband, and told, just sit back, don't worry. She thought she'd do the best thing possible, which was to release a lovely photograph. 
well, it is a lovely photograph, and a couple of uh, uh, changes to it are really quite irrelevant. But, you know, we're in a feeding frenzy, and it's rather unfortunate for her because she doesn't deserve it. And, Tom, what do you think this is going to do in terms of the relationship between Kensington Palace and the Royal Rota and also uh, readers of newspapers, our viewers, who, you know, when they are told this is a photograph... I agree with you that it's not necessarily the most important thing. At the end of the day, it's just a Mother's Day photo. But when you are told by the royal family that this is what it is and you find out that it's not, that is going to ruin trust between the British public and the monarchy. Well, I don't think ruin trust. I think it's damaging. I think it's embarrassing. Mm. But in the end, it'll blow over. I think Kate is hugely popular. She is the future of the monarchy in this country. She is recovering from a very serious operation and is still ill. This is the problem. And the real thing to change are her advisers in uh, Kensington Palace and the King's advisers in Buckingham Palace who are not protecting her and not advising her and making sure she doesn't make these sort of mistakes in her recovery. And that is the whole problem with the monarchy at the moment. It is in crisis, there's no doubt, with all these illnesses and Andrew and Carrie and all the rest of it. But there's no wise man or wise woman in Kensington Palace and Buckingham Palace just steering the royal family out of the pitfalls and dangers. And, Tom, do you think that there's a difference in the way that we treat um, Kate and William and Harry and Meghan on issues of this kind of nature? You know, Harry and Meghan have certainly said certain things that the press have disagreed with. We now know that Catherine and William have put out a photograph that was, and have essentially lied about the, the veracity of that photograph. Uh, do you think there is a difference between the way we treat two couples? I think it's terrible to compare the two. William and Kate are unbelievably loyal. They represent the best of Britain. Harry and Meghan, as you well know, and we disagree with that probably, are really the pits. I mean, they have just said the most terrible things about Britain and the royal family, and it's ridiculous, in my view, to compare the two. Look, it is an, it's most unfortunate. William wants to create a different monarchy. He sees himself as very different to his father, but he hasn't got the wise advice how to steer it carefully. He took the photograph. He was involved in all this. He should have protected Kate from this sort of uh, uh, upset and uh, sensation. But I don't really think that it ruins our trust in the royal family. It I... just means that we know that Kate did something rather foolish. Um, Tom, I, I tend to agree with you. I, I understand what Nick's saying. I think there's two things. There. I, I agree with you about the comms. I think the optics of it are rubbish, and I think it questions, again, you know, household staff. And, and uh, there was a new private secretary, I think, they've just had. They haven't had a private secretary for ages. They've just had a new private secretary. No doubt pressure will come there. But, but I also think I, I'm frustrated because I'm a royalist, and I'll tell you why I'm frustrated, OK? If somebody says you ain't going to hear from her until after Easter, you talked about bowing down to, to social media trolls. I've been taught the best thing you can do is ignore that, and it's absolutely true. They didn't need to bow down. It's like it's an own goal. It's like it's highlighted something that didn't need to be highlighted. You know, the king is presumably ill and, and the thing's slimmed down, the Queen has died. and There are people, right, questioning. There are young people, Tom, you know this, questioning, uh, you know, whether the, the royal family is, is relevant. And I just feel that by bowing to those social media people or even trying to be, you know, modern or, a, you know, a, a social media, big own goal. And it frustrates me because they hadn't made any own goals. Do you agree with me? I do, absolutely, but I wouldn't blame Kate. No. I mean, she, she's recovering. I, I just blame the grey men and women in their employment to give them proper advice and protect them from the pressure, and they completely failed. Well, I, yeah, I this hope... is an interesting point, Tom Bauer, because you and Nicola Thorpe are absolutely the same as because she said to me this morning, I think Kate's been hung out to dry here by the suits. I think she's been rolled out to make an apology, and that in it, didn't you? You said that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, at the centre of this is a woman who has been poorly and ultimately she should be left alone. Now, I, I don't know how much she personally reads social media, but perhaps the people around her yeah. have felt as though they needed to, to give in and put out this photograph. And it just hasn't worked out very well for her at all. But, Tom, what do you think the next step is? Do you think that these conspiracy theories will just continue until she returns back at Easter? Or do you think they should actually put out the original version of the photograph to kind of calm all of the speculation? Well, she, I think putting out put the original photograph will do no harm at all. I'd be surprised if she's back at Easter. I think that uh, her illness is probably going to continue for some time. Uh, I, I mean, I just wish her well, because if you're a monarchist, uh, she is the best thing 
that has happened to the monarchy uh, since Diana before the, that exploded. So we've got to protect her. And that's the problem. Uh, they don't understand how one silly mistake can cause all this furor. But my view is that by the weekend, it'll all be over. Um, I don't think we should feed any more. We should just leave her alone and let her recover. I agree. Um, listen, you've got two hats on this morning, my friend. You're earning your money. Uh, royal uh, commentator, but you also read a biography about a great man, Boris Johnson. Today, there are rumours that Dishy Rishi is so on the ropes that relationships between his camp and Boris's have thawed, and Boris is going to be wheeled out of the red wall seats that were so important uh, in the victory in 2019 because the Conservatives allegedly, Tom, if you listen and watch every single poll, are facing Armageddon, really, and Boris Johnson being brought back to campaign. I can't get over the hypocrisy of Sunak, can you? Well, I think it's desperation by Sunak and self-interest by Boris. He is desperate to come back. He wants to uh, resume his uh, uh, occupancy of Downing Street. Um, I do think that I've always thought that he'll look for a seat, but I think he's very vulnerable. I think the moment he puts his head above the parapet, he'll be shot down with all the uh, accusations which forced him out of Parliament in the first place. And I think that he hasn't learned his lesson yet. He ha does still doesn't acknowledge why he lost power, why he was driven from Downing Street. And until he does that, I don't think he'll be able to talk convincingly to the electorate. He can't all the time say, I'm sorry. He's actually got to say what he's, how he's changed. And that's the problem with Boris. He, he really is completely self-consumed. Uh, and I fancy that the people around him now are not telling him he's got to actually come up with a proposal and a plan and a statement which justifies his return to politics. But I've no doubt he'd grab it uh, and thinks that he can be the saviour. And if he is the saviour, he'll take the spoils. Well, thank you Brilliant, so much Tom. for Brilliant. joining us, Tom Bauer, royal biographer and mm. Boris Johnson biographer as well. Very honest there about Johnson. The thing that I just wanted to say very mm. quickly, he's right. Boris Johnson loves the, loves the, the, the limelight, but you should never write him off. Do you know what happened in the middle of the last bit? This happened. Oh, the seat broke, and I knew she was looking up at you. You didn't even look at me, so I've, at I've gone very small. I did think you'd shrunk in stature. I have. Right, OK. <laughs> well, still to come on Talk Today, there's been a rise in Jeremy's chair and benefits as four million people consider giving up work for good. And forget fine wine. What? You can now drink posh tea by the bottle. Posh tea? Yeah, we'll find out next. Former Home Office advisor Claire Pearson on the Times columnist Hugo Rifkin back for a final look through this morning's papers. Do stay with us. This is Talk Today at 24 minutes past eight. A very good morning to you. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Oi, 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 treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <listen. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> 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 Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. 
Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to have moved another on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to Talk Today. It is 8.27. We'll have the weather in just a moment, but here's what else is coming up in the programme. The UK's carbon emissions are at their lowest since 1879. That's thanks to a mild winter and high energy costs. Hurrah! We'll discuss that in the papers next. Well, before nine, we'll speak to a father of two struggling with debt as new research highlights how difficult it currently is for those on low incomes. And at 9.20, Royal commentator Jenny Bond gives her take on Kate's Photoshop fox pa. I think Jeremy means faux pas, but first, let's get Naz's view on the weather for the Quick, next... Quick, the weather! Faux pas, know, lad! <gasps> There's no faux pas in the weather. What does faux pas mean? A mistake, a, a, yeah. Yeah, an accident, a, a, a mess-up. Whatever Kate's done. Most of what we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've made many folks pass this morning. We have indeed. I wish I could Photoshop the weather because the graphics are just blue everywhere this morning because there's no. loads of rain. You can't do blue. It's 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> Lots of blue. But it is turning milder. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good morning. So, ooh, the weather's gone, but don't worry, I can tell you what it is. It's going to be a rather wet one across many parts of England and Wales this morning. A lot of heavy rain out there. It is, however, turning milder. We lose the easterly airflow. Now we've got a mild westerly, but that does mean we are bringing through lots of rain over the next few days, especially so out there this morning, and brisk winds as well. Something a little bit drier in store for the weekend, especially on Sunday. There'll be some sunshine, a few showers, but it will stay mild, so it will feel spring-like in that sense. So this morning, as I said, lots of rain out there for England and Wales, some heavy downpours, particularly out towards the west, now transferring further eastwards, so tricky driving conditions, surface water flooding is likely just be aware of that showery rain really across northern ireland that will be heading up towards central and southern parts of scotland as well as northern england but uh, northern parts of scotland will fare fine and bright for this afternoon central and southern areas though as you can see from the highlands southwards down towards the border there will be cloudy skies patchy outbreaks of rain northern ireland becoming drier but staying predominantly cloudy and yes a bit drier for southern and southwestern areas later as that rain transfers further eastwards to uh, this evening but uh, there will be some patchy rain for the north and west of England and Wales. You'll notice, though, once our rain clears through, it is turning milder. Temperatures will be up to around 12 or 13 degrees Celsius. The average for this time of the year is around 11. Now, overnight, that rain clears from the east, but yet more rain is piling in across parts of the northwest. It's an occluded front bringing spells of rain across Ireland, Northern Ireland and Scotland. Still some heavy downpours, wind strengthening as well with gales around the north coast of Scotland. So very wet and windy and some of that rain also spilling into the north and west of England and Wales. The rest of England and Wales, mostly dry, cloudy and a very mild night everywhere. The temperatures barely dropping from the daytime highs. Tomorrow, that rain band heads down towards the north and west of England and Wales, but it's very slow moving. So a lot of rain in a short space of time is likely in some places that could cause some surface uh, water flooding. Across parts of Scotland, though, becoming brighter later, as it will for Northern Ireland and sunny spells for central and southern areas of England and Wales too. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Thanks, Naz. Let's have a fun. Oh, goodness me. <coughs> we nearly lost him. Are you OK? <coughs> He's fine. Uh, let's take a final look through today's papers now with former Home Office advisor Claire Pearsall and Times columnist Hugo Rifkin. 
Hello. Hello, both. Oh, sorry. Right. Just, just having a little moment <laughs> there. Right. Uh, yeah. Claire, let's start with the front page of The Telegraph. This story about four million people at risk of abandoning work amid a post-lockdown surge in benefits. I can feel that the coughing fit is going to come back <laughs> from over that side of the table. I mean, <laughs> one of the failings after the pandemic was people returning to work and it's looking now at the moment there's 3.9 million people who are on benefits with no conditions attached to them so these are ill health and there will be some genuinely sick people who are waiting for treatment who cannot return to work mm -hmm. but then that isn't going to account i don't think for the entire 3.9 million people so the nhs needs to get its act together the government needs it to get to act, um, get its act together but why are we being soft on people allowed to stay unemployed because it's easier I I'm think gonna, there I'm is a keep, cohort of those people involved. You're going to keep really calm, actually. We had John Ashworth, the uh, ex-Shadow Health Secretary, who's now a Shadow Paymaster General last week, and I, we, we talked about it in quite a lot of detail. Okay. He said the Labour Party is going to get the long-term unemployed who are not sick back to work. It is absolutely disgraceful. It was not a career choice. I've been saying this. You say I'm going to shout. There is absolutely no way we are as a society able anymore to go... 3.9 million people are all disabled or mentally ill. That is absolutely, fundamentally wrong, and we should not be paying for people to sit on their backsides and do nothing. Hugo, that's a fact. Yeah, sure. I mean, look, this, <coughs> most, people are in, most people on benefits are in work, for starters. This is a, this is a, a cohort who are, who are not in work. There are two ways of looking at this. One way of looking at it is benefits are too high. Another way of looking at it is being in work's rubbish. For a lot of people, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, gen genuinely, you know, you, you see that worries yeah. me. You throw that out. A, a, an awful, an awful. But if you have no choice, my friend, because the benefit yeah, is sure. not going to make it rubbish, you get your head down and you work. But that's, uh, that, I think, that's the fallacy. For a lot of people, it'll still be rubbish. Uh, wages are very low, particularly. If the, the, I'd imagine the, the 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 bulk of the people we're talking about who are who are off work on these kind of benefits, if they were in work. They would be earning very little. The, the, the incentive is simply not there. People that means the benefits are too high, then, from what you've just said. Well, the, I mean, the, the, benefit, the benefits may be higher than the miserable wages, uh, but it doesn't. It's not like these people are living in the lap of luxury. I'm know, not they're, saying they're, that. They're, they're, they're making, they're making be, a rational, a rational choice about what flavour of misery they prefer. As a society, yeah, I know, but that's to, for me. Mm. You get up and you go to work. Mm. If you, sure. if you're saying yeah. to people, we don't pay you enough. And, and, and actually, you can sit at home. I'm sorry, that doesn't, as a society, no, to me, that's, that's not right. Well, then that, spend uh, that money that would have been spent on people's benefits on increasing wages in, you know, the public sector. I have no problem with that at my, all. My yeah. point being that there's simply that there's two ways of two ways of dealing with this. And if you, if work were more attractive, were more stable, minimum wages were higher, you'd find a lot of this problem would ever way. Okay, but would you also accept that yeah. we now live in a an, an age? And I'm not. I absolutely get there are people. And I think it's, I've said it before. I think it's a fantastic thing to have a system that helps people who can't help themselves. I put my hand up, I'm happy to pay all my tax on that. But you must accept that away from, you know, I'm disabled, I'm mentally ill, we have bred a generation or a bunch of people who are used to doing absolutely nothing. And that but, is no good for them, it's no good for society, and maybe Nick's right, maybe we should reinvest the money, but we should also say to these people, you're not staying at home. But this has always been... Give something back. Mm. This has always been true. You yeah. know, things like unemployment <coughs> benefit were incredibly poorly controlled yeah. in the 80s. Uh, you know, uh, it was free to go to university. You know, we've always sub subsidised a quite a large cohort of people who are really not doing very much. But this isn't um, just those who are on um, sort of out of work benefits. These are incapacity benefits, mm -hmm. which attract a higher level, but also don't come with the same threat of sanctions that yeah. um, universal credit would would attract. So if people aren't looking for a job, they would get sanctioned for it. Whereas the incapacity benefits don't. So you do wonder how many of those people really are waiting for treatment and are unable to work or who are just now playing that system because it's a lot easier to get away with and we than go you back, can with universal credit. We go credit. back, as we talked about the Home Office at 6 o'clock, uh, the system doesn't work and but the, it, the system needs changing as well. But it's not clear-cut. If you, if you are out of work, you are depressed, you, are, you, you, may, you may have bad habits that lead you towards disability benefit, and but, these things are all interlinked. But then going out to work actually yeah. gives you the get-up sure. and go in... With the something on your CV, get anyway. out of bed in the morning, doesn't that motivate? You talk about depression, I've had that, but do you not, if you've got some lot in life, if you've got a reason to get out of bed, yeah. isn't that part of the recovery process? Then we need Absolutely. to be offering jobs that yeah. give people a purpose rather yeah. than jobs that make them feel 
exhausted, burnt out. But you if look you at tried nurses, saying though, that Jeremy, to my, I know, but if you and tried you compare that to somebody who works in prep, somebody who works in prep actually gets paid more than our I, nurses. I'm not saying that, but so if you said to my mum's generation, you're supposed to go to work every day, and they went to work because they had to go to work to eat. That was it. I'm sure there were still people in your mum's generation, though, who didn't. Those people have always existed. Been four million people unemployed. Well, I mean, there were. I mean, women were much less, less likely to work back then. So exactly. there were. There were actually. There were a lot of people who, you know. But there wasn't the range of work. benefits yeah, available sure. to them at the time. I think we either. actually all agree that. The, I mean, for the Labour Party to say that was, I thought, was quite an interesting it's moment. Um, mm. <coughs> Hugo. So Done again, go. We're going to talk about air quality now because Jeremy's <laughs> choking on the, the air in the studio. Uh, UK carbon emissions are at their lowest level since 1879. That's why I'm this is remarkable. Yes, uh, you know, we're heading towards net zero. We're supposed to be there by 2050. Our carbon emissions have never been lower. This is sort of half... I was going to say it's half good news and half bad news. That's actually not true. It's a third good news and two-thirds bad news. <laughs> right. In that it's a third good news in that we now generate electricity in a much, much cleaner way. Uh, we have only one coal plant left and it's about to shut down. We are generating... And, uh, it, all that kind of sort of wind and solar is incredibly effective. The two-thirds bad news is that two-thirds of this decline is due to the fact that people burnt less gas last year. Uh, and they burnt less gas last, last year because it was so expensive, because of energy prices soared. However, we're all still here. And, you know, and it shows that we can be on this trajectory. We can lower carbon emissions. Uh, the country still functions. I mean, you, you can't not be glad about this. Glad? There are positives in it, but I think the biggest positive would be if we move away from the net zero agenda in the first place. I mean, you know, we're doing this, which is because we've had to, because, as you say, people aren't burning gas because it was really expensive. Do we need the threat of net zero and everybody must eat bugs for the rest of their days I'm not sure that's, to achieve well, I'm, it? I'm not sure that's strictly part of the net zero agenda, the eating of the bugs. Uh, but, I mean, look, we're just the, it's the, this year is the hottest year the planet's ever been. I mean, when we can, well, we, can in... we can tinker around oh, whether we should have this version of net zero or that version of net zero. You, I mean, there's obviously a crisis. The planet has never been... I don't... I don't burn I, too much carbon. Listen, you'd probably guess what I think. I'm sure the future generations... Nick will disagree. I think there are more important things we need to deal with, so like space travel. I'd spend it, it on building houses and choice. giving people the very rise that you lot are talking about to, to do jobs. It doesn't have to be a choice between one or the other. I think a big part of certain Labour policies has been about investing in green energy, because globally, that's... And it, Without me sounding like an attack dog, market. I thought the Labour Party two weeks ago backtracked on their £28 they billion pound pledge they and did. said they weren't going to do did. it. They I did. can yeah. tell you from a, I can tell you that Conservatives lost faith in Boris Johnson because he went down the net zero road because people... I go back to it. It's a cost but of it's, living it, crisis. It's an inconvenient, so it's hot. It's an inconvenient truth. Now, you can argue about what is truthful within that, but it is true to say that temperatures are rising because of human activity. I don't care. That... I'll be dead in 20 years. Well, precisely. There we go. <laughs> I'm just being completely serious. My kids can deal with it. Uh, Claire, the male. Getting in act... Ah, this is important. There's Nazanin Gaffer does this every day. She this does... is what they should do with the long-term unemployed. Well, getting inactive people to walk 5,000 steps three times a week could save the NHS billions, Claire. I mean, I, it's a very, very positive thing, but I always thought we were supposed to do 10,000 10, steps. So all of the apps, varying different fitness apps that I have, are all set yeah. to do the 10,000. So if I only have to do five, then I'm going to become lazier. <laughs> now, I think, that, joking aside, you, everybody needs to be active, and I think that if you're only doing 5,000 steps, but you're outside, you're walking, you're in the Walking's fresh air. a great form of exercise, It absolutely it? is. Yeah. And it's really beneficial not just for your uh, physical health, but your mental health to get out and actually look around, get away from your phone. Or Save me in lockdown, genuinely. I did it yeah. I did it four or five times a week, like five or six miles. It literally mm -hmm. it was the probably the healthiest I've been, because I can't run because of my knees. But honestly, and I do think... I, I think it's a really important message. Yeah, yeah so do I. I mean, I, I, it's one of these things that when you see it, it can save 15 billion. I mean, that is an enormous amount of money. It's dropping the ocean for the NHS, but it is enormous. Absolutely. And 10,000 steps is always an arbitrary figure anyway. They just literally plucked it essentially out of obscurity to say, yeah, this is what you're supposed to do. Do you count your steps? Uh, I used to have a, fit, a yeah. yeah, like a step tracker. Um, but when I gained weight when I was pregnant, it, the strap no longer fit me. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so I can't lose weight yeah, no, because I, I don't know so, how many steps well, I'm doing. You just start walking and then the watch <laughs> will fit again. Yeah. Hugo, you, your man lights a fine red and a goose at Christmas. Are you, are you a man that his exercise about walking? Uh, I, I run rather than walk. I mean, Do I walk you? as well, obviously. Around, around the house. You run. Get the I run. I run for exercise, yes. Uh, not very fast, so technically I suppose it qualifies as walking. Uh, as far as I can, quite a long way. Good answer. I run quite far. I, 
As, what, it's like a... Like, what, five like, kilometres, 100 yards? Give us a ballpark, like, mate. It's, it's like the song, I don't go too fast, but I go pretty far. Um, I, I, two, three miles is my average run, I would wow. say. Something like that. Who'd have thought? Well, yeah, speaking quite, of Hugo's fine dining, <laughs> our next story now is a story from The Times that says that fine diners can now drink posh tea by the bottle. Yeah, this is a strange story. Uh, basically, um, uh, so... A lot of people don't want to drink anymore, but they still want to splash out, as it were, on something nice to drink when having a meal. The new thing is tea. Uh, tea from Lao. Uh, you buy your posh tea, you have it with your meal, you pour it in a wine glass, it looks a bit like wine. Why not? Claire? What a miserable it's cold existence. Tea. Mm. Yeah, it's cold, cold tea. tea. It's cold yes. tea. I use, I use it as an actor, isn't it? it? To, like, you know, pretend that it's someone else. Vimto, actually. It's... You'd use a lot of Vimto and Red Cordial to pretend it was red wine. That's what I drink. Can I just <laughs> say something? It's virtually kombucha, <laughs> I would say. So you're supposed to, you're supposed <laughs> to walk a lot, right? Drink, cold, drink tea. cold tea. Not go to work and give up wine. What a miserable but country. Also, no, turn your heating off. This no, I'm going to put yeah, my heating on. I'm going to buy the red wine, watch the telly and not walk anywhere. But this is what people are doing. You know, not as many people alcohol-free versions available, which sure. are pretty good. So why not have those? I mean, cold tea in a wine glass. Fair. Is it iced tea? Iced tea's good. Yeah. It's not that good. Alcohol-free lager. Like Am I missing the point? The whole point of having a lager is it's got alcohol in it. I don't understand why because people... Because some people don't wish to drink every time. Rubbish. And if they I... want to have something that looks like a beer so nobody is taking the mickey out of them in the pub, Exactly, so no-one play. thinks they're pregnant. Right, exactly. just really quickly want to do this final story, Hugo. Yes. Um, tell us why a man has appeared in court charged with spray painting things. OK, <laughs> if I must. Uh, this is a man... <laughs> Such enthusiasm. Um, a man in Kent, in Dartford, uh, Mr, Mr. Mr. Danny Wiskin, he's been spray painting post boxes uh, with, um, with what he regards as art. He disguised <laughs> one as a cream egg. There you go. And another one was Mr. Blobby. Another cream egg story. <laughs> really? Yeah, second, second another in the cream morning. egg, yeah. Two going, in a day. I'm I, beating I now that woman. see... You want to, I mean, it's a good job I mentioned the cream egg and not just Mr. Blobby. Other, oh, otherwise, well, then, God knows what will be happening over there right now. You'd have eaten me as Mr. Blobby, <laughs> you just said on national television you'd have eaten I was like, me. Well, you That's a second there. cream egg, love, isn't it? Yeah, two eggs a day. Down, yeah. Why not? Uh, yeah. Listen, gang, You've got thank 50 you. to get through by the end of the month. <laughs> I, think, I think one of the highlights <laughs> yeah. of the last few months is Hugo Rifkin and esteemed times saying, do I have to do this? Well, I will. <laughs> thank you, gang. Lovely to see you. See you next week. You. Uh, what is it? Sorry. 14, uh, 16 minutes to 9 o'clock. Uh, thank you very much, Steve, for your comments. We Quick asked maths. you... Pardon? Quick maths. I appreciated that. I'm quick at everything. Um, will more Tory MPs follow Lee Anderson? This big story this morning. He defected to reform yesterday. Richard Tice has pleased his punch. We're all saying, hold on a second, 30p, Lee. You were a Labour person. Then you joined the Tory party. You haven't been suspended or thrown out of both. Now you're with the reform. Are well, more following suit. That's what we wanted to hear from you on. Well, you've been getting in touch. Uh, Archie says the Tories have caused their own demise. Meanwhile, reform scored the goal by showing them true Conservative values. I think this will cost both Labour and the Tories a huge share of their voting percentage. Sorry, I'm checking on a cream egg. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> God punishing you. Would you like some water? Yeah, thank Maybe you'll have to shut up for a while. Um, but how do you say that? Okay. Brent Burnder? I think it's Brenda well, with an auto. Well, why can't they...? Oh, right, OK. I hope the reform... I hope the reform will not become a Conservative jump ship. And Wesley says, whilst it's great to see people and politicians moving away from the Tories who destroyed our country, we should not eliminate the possibility of ending up with the same Conservative Party in power just under a new name. Uh, yeah, Weston, let the Tories retire and get a new bunch into power who care about this country and its people. And Finn says, in the beginning, I was hopeful about reform. Sounds like a song. <laughs> it sounds quite biblical. <laughs> yeah. um, but Lee's switch has made me think that reform will simply be a skin suit for the people who are the problem and have done nothing to resolve the problem. Very interesting. Talk today at talk.tv. Uh, text to 8722. Do please start your message of the word talk. Still to come and talk today. A new poll reveals over 15 million people across this country are struggling to pay for simple living costs. We'll speak to a father of two about his struggles with debt. You are with Talk Today. Quarter to nine. We're coming back in three. Join us at Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. It's a man.
Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, <Where is> it? <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to was have another moved on from era. That. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back. You were talking today. It's approaching 12 minutes to 9. Kevin Alex from 9.30. Now, check this. Whatever you're doing this morning, these, these are really... I mean, this is important. A million Brits are in arrears trying, uh, trying to pay household bills, according to shocking new YouGov data commissioned by the National Debt Help Charity, <gasps> Christians Against Poverty. And a further 4.5 million people have mainly been using credit to pay for their monthly bills in the last six months. When we talk about a cost of living crisis, my friends, it is very, very real. Absolutely. Well, we're joined now by regional leader for Christians Against Poverty, Lorraine Papayawanu, and father of two, Anthony Evans, who's been struggling with debt. Anthony, thanks so much for joining us this morning to talk about your situation. Can you just tell us how bad it's got? Uh, yeah, uh, so... Um... Just over, well, just over three years ago, I got into um, over ten thousand pounds debt, um, and I didn't, know, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to pay that off. Um, I, I, I wasn't looking. I, I stopped looking at the bills um, since, but since Cap came along, um, things got a lot better. Um, they helped me to work out how to, that, that 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 the impossible situation was actually sortable. Um, but can yeah, I, I mean, it, can, it I, still gets... can I jump in, Christian? Yep. Uh, sorry, can I just jump in, my friend? Sorry, uh, Lorraine, I'll get to you in just a tick. I think debt's a really important thing to talk about. And I think it's very easy for us to assume you come on television, you're going to outline it, right? It's difficult. And I absolutely get that. Very quickly, a couple of questions make it easy for you. How did you get into debt? Was it bills? Was it your own expenditure? What was it? Um, it, it was, for, for me, um, I, 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 I pretty much closed my eyes to, to how, how I was spending. But. Um, it got to a point where I couldn't, um, I, I couldn't, I couldn't go shopping. I, um, I had to make sure that I went shopping like once a week, or you know, I limited how how often I'd go shopping because I couldn't, I couldn't afford the basics anymore. Um, can I, can I, can I bring you in? Um, and I, and I want to, I want to say this for a reason. This is not 
it, to me, it's not about being Christian, and I'm being completely straight with you. There are millions and millions of people in this country who not, do not get the help, the guidance, the understanding. One of my bugbears, I don't know if Nicola knows this, is why we don't in our damn schools teach people how to budget. My mother taught me. I know it's really boring. She used ins and outs, credit and debit, and she had a book, and that's how they did it. Uh, you know... Credit is so available, everybody's got a smartphone. It's easy to get into debt. You, took, you put on top of that a cost of living crisis, it's a disaster, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's an absolute disaster. You're quite right. And uh, this, isn't, this isn't any surprise at all for us at uh, Christians Against Poverty. We see this day in, day out. And this, this report that we're launching today just shows um, we're looking for the first time at the effect on living standards that debt and poverty bring. We're just seeing how debt drives people into poverty. And it's all starting with low incomes. Households on low, low incomes and people in jobs, in low income jobs, are now being driven into debt and poverty just because they're trying to put their essential bills, nothing ex extra or essential, onto credit to survive. And that very quickly becomes unmanageable and out of control. And Lorraine, according to this report, are you seeing that people in rural towns are suffering more than people who live in cities? Like, what's the demographic breakdown, really, of the people who are struggling the most? Do you know, to be honest, it, it's all such an individual thing. Every individual client matters to us and their own personal situation is, is always different and always individual. But what we're finding is it's a combination of those low incomes. And it's not just people on benefits. It's because our, our, our incomes are so low now that there's a tipping point when the income is not, is, is not sufficient to allow people to pay their essential bills. They then start putting it on credit. And for, to be honest, we see it with our rural centres. We see it with our um, uh, inner city centres as well. Across the East Midlands, we've got centres here. In Leicester, we've got three uh, city centres, uh, uh, debt centres, but we also have centres in places like Ilkeston and Retford and across in Boston. And, uh, and we're finding that clients are presenting with the same problems and it produces the same feelings of despair, isolation, shame and guilt. And it's absolutely not their fault. They're simply trying to that's trying to survive, and we want them to thrive at CAP. Lorraine, I th sorry, Nick, I was just going to say, I, th I, th I really admire anybody. I, I, I didn't want to make it about religion. I admire anybody, because I do think there's a lot of people, and I think that there is a... Um, a peop people feel shame. Uh, there will be instances, let's be perfectly honest, where people, you know, put stuff on credit because they're, they're not aware of, of, of things. There are other people who are irresponsible. But it... it I mean, you, you raise a really good point there. I want to talk about benefits. I want to talk about jams. I, call, I talk about every day, just about managing these people. The mum-dad works, the dad works, the kids are at school, and they struggle to even eat. There was that, you know, this, this thing about that they're, they're saving food for their kids. This is a reality, and these people pay all their bills and are struggling themselves and don't get a penny from the state. And I think those people always deserve a shout out. I really do. Yeah. You're absolutely spot on there. And that's why we have debt centres. We've got 12 debt centres across the East Midlands. As I say, three here in Leicester. We've got them dotted around uh, towns and cities in the East Midlands. And they need the big message from us, really, is if you are struggling, it, it, even if you, don't, you haven't started yet on the debt journey, or maybe you're just beginning to realise that your income, even though you're working, is not sufficient, don't sit there alone. Please don't feel that there's no help available. We've got a website, um, capuk.org, all lowercase, capuk.org. Start there. And there's some incredible advice and help there. One of the things as well for people on, on benefits is... Something people don't know. There's about £19 billion pounds of unclaimed benefit going around the system. And some people don't realise they could be entitled to some stuff that they didn't even realise they, they could get. So go on our website, capuk.org, and just um, put into the search bar benefits calculator. And you might find we're finding hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of unclaimed benefits for people who didn't realise they were even entitled. So that's a practical tip. But certainly, we, we've got these debt centres all the way across the Midlands, East Midlands. Please get in touch with us. We've got a, a helpline as well, 0800 428 Zero, zero, zero. Please just put in Christians Against Poverty into a, a Google um, search. There is help out there. There's hope out there. As you said, we're the Christians. You don't have to be. You can be of any faith or no faith at all. You'll find a very non-judgmental and a, a, you know, a really loving, helping response. But don't sit there alone because most of our clients, that's how, you know, that's how they feel. Good and advice. we want to see that they get help. Good advice. And Anthony, just really quickly, can you talk to us about how Lorraine and the charity were able to help you specifically? Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, 
Pretty, pretty much, they they've they've taught me that I can, that I can have savings. Um, so, well, the other year when I needed to put my car into uh, through MOT and through repairs, I I, I get into the, the stressful place thinking I can't deal with this. In a similar way to, to when I couldn't check read my um, over my letters to see what the bills were. Um, so I phone cap like last minute again as usual. Um, oh, I, I can't afford to put my car through and. I, I, I had the savings. I had the savings there. They had the savings put away. And so they were actually there. Realize. It's often just a case of feeling so overwhelmed. So it's Samaritans. It's, it it's, it's for you, if you're in a position where you think you're the only person in a hole, being so able to isolating. talk to somebody that can be, pri you know, practical is useful. Uh, both of you, thank you, Lorraine and Nancy. Really appreciate you being on. It is an absolute fact of life that millions of people in this country are struggling. Talk to somebody seriously. I'm telling you, it's great advice. Well, lots more still to come on the show. We'll ask Lee Anderson's defection to Reform UK what it could mean for his old and new political parties. And do keep getting in touch with your views and opinions. This is Talk Today. It is 8.56. Good morning. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of Cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treacle. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Where is> it? <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, it put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. This is Talk Today with Jeremy Kyle and Nicola Thorpe. A very good morning to you. It is 9am on Tuesday, the 12th of March. And you're with Talk Today, my friends. We're on TV, radio, online, and, of course, your smart speaker. These are your top stories. Body blow. 30p Lee becomes three-party Lee as he defects to reform. 
But can the Prime Minister survive losing yet another MP? Back to Boris. Uh, the former leader is set to hit the campaign trail in a desperate attempt to win back Red Wall voters. Apparently, he and Rishi are tight as anything now. That's when to And a royal apology. The Princess of Wales says she's sorry for editing her Mother's Day photograph, but fails to silence speculation online. And we've lost the cold easterly winds, but it is also turning milder and wetter. I have the full details in the forecast at the end of the programme. Cheers, Naz. Now it's time for your headlines with Emily. Thank you, Nicola. Good morning. Reports this morning suggest that the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak could call a snap general election if 10 Conservative MPs defect to Reform UK. It comes after Lee Anderson said he's been given the chance to speak out for millions of people up and down the country after defecting from the Conservative Party amid an Islamophobia row. The MP says he should be able to speak his mind, and those living in his constituency agree. Well, he got kicked out of Tory party, basically. And it was saying what we all think. It's getting ridiculous. I didn't know it was today, but I like Lee Anderson. I think it's a good move for us, hopefully, anyway. Because he tells the truth, his working class background, it's just. He comes out with it. He's not frightened of what he's saying. Controversial social media influencer Andrew Tate and his brother have been arrested in Romania over allegations of sexual aggression. The charges date back to 2012 to 2015, with the brothers denying the allegations. They were handed a European arrest warrant by UK authorities and an investigation is pending. They're already facing rape and human trafficking charges in Romania, where they live. The government is today warning that the UK risks blackouts unless it builds new gas-fired power stations. In a speech later on, the Energy Security Secretary, Claire Cattino, will say that the new stations will replace existing plants that are soon to retire. But critics say it could threaten the UK's legal obligations to cut carbon emissions to net zero by 2050. The rate of UK unemployment rose to 3.9% in the three months to January, up from 3.8% in the previous quarter. Meanwhile, figures from the Office for National Statistics also show that wage growth has slightly eased back to 6.1% in the three months to January. And more than 900,000 young people who did not get their MMR jab as children are being invited to take part in a catch-up campaign amid a rising number of measles cases. The NHS is writing to 19 to 25-year-olds in London, Greater Manchester and the West Midlands, inviting them to book an appointment. There have been 733 cases of measles in England since October last year. You're up to date with the headlines. I'll have another update at 10 o'clock. Did you have a jab when you were a kid, you two, for measles? Yes. Absolutely. Had you? Yeah. And it, it, cause it, we're almost at the day, aren't we? I mean, we're four weeks behind you with our child, but we have to go, that's the word. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, you're talking about our kids. You yeah, have yeah. to have the injection, that's horrible. Oh, it's very sad when, yeah, when you have to have your little baby have the, yeah, a jab in each thigh, it's very, very upsetting. But it's good for the health, so. We used to go to measles parties. I'm old fashioned. Uh, listen, thanks for all your involvement today. Two main stories, of course. Um, the first being Lee Anderson defects uh, to reform yesterday. That's Labour to Tories to reform. All in six years, 30p Lee becomes three party Lee. We I want wonder to know... if he'll ever go green. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> all of there's them. one thing he ain't going is carbon emission zero or whatever that is oh, by 2050. Love to take your opinion still throughout the next half an hour. Talk today at talk.tv, text to 8722. Daxton. Is that right? Great name. Sounds like a dog. I think Mr Anderson will win his seat with whichever flag he sits under, but it may be reform's only success. And Jake texted us his views on 8722. He says, I totally agree with Lee, but if reform keeps taking Conservative cast-offs, I might have to think again before I vote for them. Uh, Ross emailed us. Thank you, Ross. A lot more people like me entirely agree with his comments. He's the only one who spoke our minds. I hope reform succeeds in the general election as other parties are rotten to the core. Lee says, oh, nice of Mr Anderson to text in. Uh, I think... Oh, Jake, he... that could have been Jake Berry, the one oh, before we're in. There we go. No. Uh, he says, I think if more Tories make a move to switch to reform, then Rishi might take the hint and resign in favour of Penny Mordaunt. Wow. Ruby, uh, so the one who, so the ones who put this country in a mess are now jumping ship to keep their jobs. Talk there today at talk.tv. So it is the main news story of the day. The PM under renewed pressure today after Lee Anderson, you heard, defected to reform the Ashfield MP yesterday, who'd been suspended for Islamophobic remarks, becomes reform's first ever sitting MP. Now, it's his third party in six years. It's quite a lot. That. He had also previously been suspended as a Labour councillor in 2018. Speaking yesterday, he explained his decision. Like millions of people in this country, I feel that we are slowly giving our country away.
we are allowing people into our country that will never integrate and adopt our British values. Parliament doesn't seem to understand what many British people want. It is no secret that I've been talking to my friends in Reform for a while, and Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. And like millions of people up and down the country, all I want is my country back. Well, we're joined now by Assistant Editor at The Spectator, Cindy Yu. Cindy, good news for Reform UK yesterday, was it? Yeah, this is a big coup for them because Lee Anderson is one of those outspoken Tory MPs who not only that, has a really high profile in the public eye as well. You know, if you polled people about what the Tory MPs that they knew, Lee Anderson would be one of those names that did come up, not least because of his GB News profile. Um... Never heard of that, but <laughs> here's, here's the irony. Here's the irony, Cindy, of the situation as I see it. Uh, Rishi Sunak, who coveted this job so much that he brought down Boris Johnson, we've all got an opinion on that, <laughs> who said he was going to do things differently, such a bad judge of character, or maybe, you know, people will say didn't do, isn't up to the job, gives Suella Bravman a job just mm -hmm. to get the job, sacks her, made Lee Anderson, knowing full well what a firebrand, what an honest shoot from the hip guy is, got nothing against him, he's as entitled to his opinions as other people, I don't have to agree with them, right? But the fact of the matter is you make a man like that deputy party chairman and you are waiting for an implosion. I would suggest whether he wins his seat or he doesn't, and he does say a lot that people will understand and agree with. He says a lot that people don't. Let's make that point. But for me, another example of Richie Sunak out of his damn depth, the people that he brought forward, I don't understand it at all. So it's quite a well-trodden path for Prime Ministers to bring in people from all parts of the party to these major roles. Same with Suella Braverman, especially if you are a Prime Minister who's seen as not from that wing. So for, the, for him, at the time, it would have been political cover, basically. It would have been saying, I'm also tough on immigration, I'm also tough on all these things that you care about. Look, I've brought in Suella Braverman, I've brought in Lee Anderson. And the point is, these people are there to have controlled explosions, yeah. things to dominate the headlines that would be good for the Conservative Party. Problem was, neither of those explosions were able to be controlled. Uh, Rishi Sunak wasn't able to... That's a bad judgment by him, then, isn't it? Possibly, but I think part of the problem is also the fact that the um, situation with, for example, immigration just hasn't got better. Um, and I think Rishi Sunak also was dealing with a, with, a, with a party that was a coalition from the 2019 election, both gathered together under a different Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, and he didn't have quite that gathering power to keep that or coalition Or political together. experience, course, now or ability. Possibly, yes. There are absolutely legitimate criticisms of our immigration system in the UK, criticisms that you can make without being accused or shouldn't be accused mm. of being racist. However, what Lee Anderson was thrown out of the party for specifically was those Islamophobic comments, particularly about Sadiq Khan. He's there saying, I want my country back. Yeah. You'd be forgiven for thinking that there is a link there yeah. between him saying, I want my country back, and the people I want my country back from are people of a certain religion or people of a certain ethnicity, for which you could be accused of being racist. Absolutely. And, and the point is, he refused repeatedly to apologise when the Tory whips asked him to. And so the Conservative Party had its own face to maintain, really. You know, if they, if they refuse, if he refuses to, to acknowledge that what he said was offensive, then there's really a very little place that the Conservative Party could go. But the question is, as well, how long have these conversations with reform been going on for? Because, yeah. again, to mention that rival TV channel, <laughs> GB News, <laughs> Richard Tice, the the chairman of reform is also, you know, a presenter there. So there is, there are these links there mm -hmm. have always been okay. kind of very close. I just they didn't even get the exclusive on it, which I thought was quite interesting. Two of their presenters and they didn't get the exclusive. I, 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 for me, it says nothing about um, uh, Rishi Sunak's judgment. They talk about, um, you know, will more defect. I've just got this in from Nadine Dorries, by the way. This is really interesting. She's just tweeted... You'll have heard the news this morning, Cindy, that Boris Johnson is apparently and allegedly, yes. this is really interesting, being brought back to campaign in the Red Wall. Uh, uh, Nadine Doris tweets, this story has been panic placed by number 10, probably by Isaac Levido, in a desperate attempt to halt any further defections to reform. There is no thawing of relations, no plans to campaign. Sunak and Johnson haven't spoken for over a year. 
That from Nadine Doris, who would know. She's saying yeah. this rubbish about Johnson has been placed by number 10 because they are terrified, on the back of Lee Anderson, that more MPs will defect to reform. Your response to that, Cindy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this story had about 12 hours to live. Yeah. <laughs> you know, number 10 put it out later, uh, late last night, saying that Boris Johnson is going to help them campaign. To my previous point about this coalition of 2019 MPs being brought together by Boris Johnson, that could have been a really helpful rallying cry for them, especially in the red wall seat. But, you know, not just Nadine Doris, Andrea Jenkins, who's also an ally of Boris Johnson, has also come out to say that this isn't quite what's going on behind the scenes. And so you can see this as a number 10, you know, strategy to try to prevent more defections. But I would also say that before we think that there are more defections coming, you know, it's quite a big move for any uh, Conservative MP to go to reform. Yep. Because essentially what you're saying is that, yes, of course, you might be facing electoral defeat, but a vote for reform now electorally, calculously speaking, um, is a vote for Labour. Mm. But yeah, I guess you could also be saying to your constituents, vote. this is what I believe, do you believe with me? That, that, well, that I mean, if he really believed that, he should call by election yeah, <laughs> and I, go mate, vote back you. in again. Precisely. And also, he could have stayed as an independent. You know, it's not as though yes. he left the Tory party being a welcome member of the party. You know, he had already been... And he out. goes when he gets suspended or thrown out. I am with yeah. you 100% of the by-election. been saying it all morning. We have a prime minister who wasn't voted by the people. The people mm. of Ashworth need to decide whether Lee Anderson should be their MP, be it Reform, Conservative, Labour, Green or whatever else party he's going to join. That's what I believe is right. I don't think it's fair he sits there for yeah, six months. And absolutely, I really don't. If you look back to the Douglas Carswell example from 2015, <laughs> you know, he had defected from the Tories to UKIP, called a by-election because he believed in the principle of the thing, got re-elected for yeah. UKIP because he believed that the popular support for the party was so much. So if Lee Anderson's really concerned about people up and down the country wanting to support the reform cause, then he probably possibly should call by Very list. interesting. Moving on to a slightly different story now. Um, story here on the front page of The Guardian. Um, one of the biggest, or if the biggest, yeah. Tory donor um, has said some horrendous uh, racist comments uh, about black women, specifically targeting Diane Abbott. Uh, Rishi Sunak yet to say that he will reject any of this money that has been donated uh, by Frank Hester. Ten million quid. 10 million quid. He is the biggest donor of the Conservative Party. What a horrendous look that is, as if Sunak doesn't need him. <laughs> Why hasn't he thrown this man out already, Sunak? What is wrong well, with him? Well, it's 10 million quid, you know, so it's, 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 it's difficult for the Conservative Party. We've just talked about all the dire straits it's in right now. Yep. Um, I would be surprised if the Tories decide to kind of give back that money. They might really? say that they, they might say that in future, you know, he needs to do certain things uh, so that he can keep donating, but the, he'll, they'll, they'll probably fall back on the argument that the money's already with the party now. But it's also worth saying that Frank Hester has apologised for his comments, which were made three years ago. Um, and he's, he's tried to... Uh, apparently three he's, years ago? Apparently he's tried to call Diane Abbott and the, to apologise to her in person. I mean, I think the person you think the comments are not accidental. If you see, you know, they're, they're so explicit and so yeah. detailed and so lengthy that they feel like more than just like a slip of the tongue. But uh, we're but back there again, apologized. aren't we? We're, 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 we're with the Lee Anderson thing, right? I, I, I've met Diana, but I think politically, no, right? But <laughs> Lee Anderson might feel that about Sadiq Khan. I hate yeah. what Sadiq Khan has done. I've got so many friends who are London cabbies who hate what Sadiq Khan has done. But you don't have to say the words that Lee Anderson said. You don't have to say what Hester said. You don't have to link it to racism. You don't have to link it to gender. No. Um, because then you won't be taken seriously, will you, in anybody's book? One statement from TPP, who I think are associated with um, Hester, or said about Hester, that um, his criticism had nothing to do with her gender nor colour of her skin, yet he said the words it makes you want to hate all black yeah. women. So he seems to be denying that link. But, you know, whether it whether or not it will wash. You've got to ask the question as well. Keir Starmer has done, it would seem, a good job of rooting out anti-Semitism mm. within his party. Are, could, are the Tory party, with comparisons to how it used to yeah, be... Yeah, that's true, mate. Um, yeah, yeah. That's are the true. Tory party doing the same with racism within their own party? We'll have to see. Thank you so much for Cindy, joining yeah, what us. a pleasure Cindy that was. Thank you. From The Spectator. Well, still to come, the Princess of Wales is pictured in public after admitting to editing now. her Mother's Day photo. We'll get Jenny Bond's take on Kate Gates next. Oh, God. This is Talk Today. It is 9... 9.14. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Oi, oi, treat girl. 
When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square because you've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, yeah. minutes, four... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Uh, welcome back, my friends. 18 minutes past nine. Kev and Alex from 9.30. Julia from 10 o'clock. Now, Kensington Palace still refusing to release the original portrait taken of the Princess of Wales and her kids after she yesterday announced that she'd edited the family image of her family before release. And lots of people still saying, including Piers Morgan and a certain Ms Nicola Thorpe, we need to see the original picture because only then will we know if it's a con. I'm like, why? Well, it was the first official picture release of the princess since she underwent planned abdominal surgery back in January. Royal commentator and legend, give me some semblance of balance. Jenny Bond, a very good morning to you. Jen, what's going on? Can we just leave this be? Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's verging onto bullying someone who is trying to recover from a very serious operation. And hell, what does it matter? What harm has been done? Who doesn't manipulate, if you want to say, but edit their pictures if they can. Unfortunately, Catherine wasn't terribly good at it, and perhaps that therein lies her mistake. And I suppose it maybe was a mistake uh, to try to edit a picture that was going to be so uh, publicly uh, wanted around the world and so significant. But she's she's fessed up. Yeah, I did it. I did it rather badly. And let's, uh, like the Sun newspaper was saying this morning, let's lay off her. I think it's verging on bullying now. Well, Jenny, isn't there a legitimate criticism to be had? Not of Kate. I'm totally with you on that. She's a, she's a lady who's had an operation. She should be left alone. However, now Kensington Palace have entered into this debate because they put forward this photograph that has been heavily edited. Now, we were told this was a photo that was taken last week. I think a lot of people out there will now believe and speculate, perhaps conspiratorially, that this there are further lies to this, that perhaps this photo wasn't taken last week. And they want to see that original image in order to prove that they weren't lying again. And at the end of the day, because there has been this white lie, as it were, about the editing of this photograph, the trust isn't 
as it was between the public, the press and Kensington Palace. Well, there you go. You've said people out there speculate, conspiracy, all these rabbit holes that social media lead us down. We cannot, on a serious news programme, be led, let the agenda be led by the Twitter sphere and by TikTok land. I mean, it is full of the most absurd and but, obscene... But, Jenny, to be fair to them, they were right when they were talking about... Um, the fact that this image had been edited. Kensington Palace didn't say anything overnight on Sunday evening to Monday morning. Those people called conspiracy theorists, and I am, I am with you on, to a certain degree on that, but they were proven right by the palace at the end of the day by asking these questions. Well, let's have Kim Kardashian give us all her unedited pictures. Let's look back on history. Should we go back to not just royals, but Abraham Lincoln in the 1860s? His pictures were edited to make him look leaner, to make his neck look wider. At one point, his head was put on the poli a, po a politician's body, not his own body. Let us go back to Prince Edward's wedding, Edward and Sophie. The official photographer there admitted afterwards that William had been, been looking a little bit glum, so he'd taken an earlier picture of William where he was smiling and popped it on the head from the wedding photo. But Jenny, the situation is so... It's it's very different here. I know you said about Kim Kardashian. We don't it, pay the tax. Very different? The taxpayer doesn't pay for Kim Kardashian. It is different because so the reason. So then you leave me to think that everybody who's kicking up a fuss is an anti-royalist, Nick. No, they're not anti-royalists. Well. I genuinely think that this comes from a place of people caring about Kate and wanting to then know leave her alone. that she Have is you read okay. What's online? But this photograph was published specifically for the reason that. To, to kind of quell the speculation and to say, actually, she is well. So it doesn't look good when the photo that is released I, has been heavily edited. I think, Jen, it looks stupid, right? This is what I think. I think that the monarchy slimmed down, you know, uh, uh, the mistake in my mind, the optics are so appalling, Nick's right on that, are that apparently the monarchy, William, Kate, whoever, KPs, the comms, have decided to bow to pressure. They said, she's out yeah. till after Easter. Fine, accept that. That's the deal, the woman's ill. They've bowed to pressure, they've cocked up. She's gone, yes, I fessed up, I did it. But now they're all running around going, oh, was it is she, Was it her photo? Did she take it? Was she in the car? Led by Piers, that's his opinion, he's entitled to it. My thing is, hold on a second, so she's messed up, but why the... I get the trust thing, but... And, I mean, there's a point, ex royal correspondent. Does this affect the trust between the media and KP? Thoughts on that quickly? I don't think it does. I don't think we should allow it to. Um, as I say, historically, this sort of thing has always happened, not just with royals. We, if we're going to have no trust between uh, the press and the public and the royal family because of this, then we have to mistrust absolutely every photograph we see in every newspaper. But, Jenny, if they had actually sent an official royal photographer to take this image, then there would be that trust. There would be somebody outside the royal family who said, yeah, I was there, I took the photo, it existed. Now, are we going to distrust what comes directly from William and Catherine? I'm not going to. Why? Because I'm not. I think she's made a mistake. She's photoshopped a photo. What? I... And you believe that that's what's happened? I do. Because okay. she's told me. So do I. So do okay. I. I, just, I just, listen, everybody's got... Everybody's entitled to their opinion. I just think there are, you know, like many amateur photographers did, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion. The family photograph we shared yesterday caused... I hope everyone's celebrating and had a very happy Mother's Day. Well, I hope you all had a very happy Tuesday. We're out of here. Jenny Bond, thank you very much indeed. More books than a library that woman's got. Have a look. That's absolutely incredible. We love, love you, Jen. love to come and visit. Well, that's all from us here on Talk Today. We'll see you tomorrow from 6am. Kevin, Alex up next but first here is the weather with nas have a great day we'll see you tomorrow morning bright and early then next here's nas to rock <laughs>Hello, it's looking wetter from the west through this afternoon. We're going to continue to see spells of heavy rain spreading eastwards, mainly across England and Wales, but some showery spells also spreading to central and southern parts of Scotland and later another mass of rain heading to Northern Ireland. But it's turning noticeably milder from the west with a change in wind direction. We're seeing temperatures rise up to around 12 or 13 degrees Celsius, so higher than recent days. Into tonight, we continue to see that rain across Ireland and Northern Ireland pulsing up towards parts of Scotland with some heavy 
heavy downpours and the wind strengthening there as well. The rain across eastern parts of England mostly clearing, but there will be some patchy downpours spreading to the north and west of England and Wales, turning heavier by dawn. It becomes blustery through the night, but it stays mostly dry across parts of the Midlands, central, southern and eastern England, although it will be cloudy and overall a very mild night compared to recent ones. Tomorrow, that band of rain across the north and west will very, very slowly edge its way further south and eastwards to northern and western parts of England and Wales, as well as over the Republic of Ireland. So a lot of rain is expected and that could cause some localised flooding issues. Becoming brighter and drier for Scotland and Northern Ireland, staying cloudy further south and east and mild everywhere. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Oi, oi, right, oi, oi, treat girl. Having a conversation with a professional journalist, he chose to belittle her, diminish her, um, and use sexist language. I can't stand the word casual sexism. There's nothing casual about igniting and using kind of diminishing and belittling language about anyone, especially someone who's trying to do her job. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. And when the media constantly refer to trans criminals, when they are biological men as women, we will no longer put up with these lies about our gender anymore and about our sex. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. I, that's robust. It's going to cause a, an argument. It's going to cause tension. But we've got to do it, because otherwise this country is going down the path. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying, um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yeah, Quite yeah, right, yeah. too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media, having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. One parent commented on a review of Peppa Pig that their daughter had begun to lash out since watching the show and added that Peppa is rude, bossy, a liar, tattletale and even more. Say it's not so. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, is it? There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. <laughs> Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans. Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, you put him in an ice cream store. And once you get defeated by a guy named Begley, that's <laughs> it. You retire from politics, and you speak to Rosanna on primetime and have a lot more fun. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, had lots of racism in it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Then I 